<laughs> okay. Namaste, everybody. So uh, we are back again, and uh, we're doing this video for KRS channel, and we're going to do a video. Uh, this is a discussion um, on Anuradha Nakshatra, and I always wondered whenever we uh, started interacting together, this team, and uh, started working together on nakshatras. I always wondered, you know. Um, what would be their combinations in their chart and it's been over i think two and a half years that all of us kind of meet and speak for hours together on nakshatras but there has not been a single time that each of us have, have asked each other our date of births and i don't think you know we know really well that what planets and stars we have and that is that is surprising because that brings us together and it feels as though the, uh, the goal, the principal goal is to come together and to discuss and to enrich ourselves rather than knowing each other's chart. But uh, this, this nakshatra that we're going to discuss today on Anuradha, and I have a very funny feeling that, you know, all of us must be somehow linked via Anuradha. And that should be very deep because it's all about friendship for us. It's about, you know, um, it's like an oath. It's like a commitment to the science and to the subject which has brought us together. And we come here repeatedly, uh, you know, we come here periodically and do these sessions with you people. But I always wondered, you know, what was that which was the link which brings us together? And maybe it is this, the love for the science, love for nakshatras. It's unconditional love. There's not been a day that, you know, I, I've never asked Aditya or Evji or Santip, you know, what was their chart? And I've never wanted to. And I don't think I still know what they have. You know, only just when we discuss, maybe one or two, they let, let out their secrets about, oh, I have something here in this planet. But I know for a fact that we must be having something which brings us together. And this is the commitment, this is the oath, and this is the oath of the deity of this nakshatra, which is Mitra. He's about commitment. He's about those treaties and contracts Definitely, yeah. I can say I have something in Anuradha, Dr. Pai. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to say anything more. <laughs> Needless to say. But, you know, if you see, you know, if you look at the word Mitra, the word Tra, okay, it as though looks like a binder. Okay, the Sanskrit word Tra. Or it is, it's, it's also said to be truth or order. Somebody who maintains order, who tries to bring in order or tries to bind things together. And that's how we have the words like nakshatra. Okay, it's like an instrument. It's an apparatus of naksha. Naksha means the map. Similarly, you have mantra. Then you have yantra. You have tantra. So all of these are tra, which means they're binding something together. They're bringing a concept together. Okay. Tatra is an instrument. Similarly, Mitra, Mitra means he's trying to bind, he's trying to bring things together. And that is what you see is he's the sovereign principle of, you know, human solidarity. And he shows, you know, um, friendship, partnership, fellowship, companionship amongst humanity. And this is all based on good faith and cooperation. That's, I think this is what the message of Mitra is all about. And let us not forget, it's very strange when we start talking about uh, these nakshatras. And I was very fascinated with uh, looking at um, the Ashta Sakis of uh, Lord Sri Krishna. You know, there are many friends of Krishna and they are, you know, they're, 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 they're termed very differently. You know, the Ashta Sakis have been said that there are Sakis, there are Nitya Sakis, there are Prana Sakis, there are Priya Sakis, there are Parama Preshta Sakis. These are the five kinds of Sakis, you know, as per the Gaudiya scheme of things. But who are these Sakis? Sakis means friends. But even, even, even amongst the friends, they have different forms of friendship. You know, some are maid servants of Lord Krishna, some are friends, and some of them are messengers of Lord Krishna. And amongst them, there are, there, there are eight of them who are called as Varishta. Varishta means very important, very close to Lord Sri Krishna in their love and its unconditional love. And amongst them, 
the eldest of them is called as Lalita Sakhi, Lalita Devi. And she was also called as Anuradha. And if you look and read about, uh, you know, Lalita Devi, it said that she is, you know, 27 days elder to Srimati Radharani, the concept of Lord Shri Krishna. Okay. She was also called as Radhika. Srimati Radharani is called as Radhika. So Lalita, it's very surprising to see this connection. And, you know, 27 days elder, what would that make? Would Vishakha then be the uh, the 20, you know, I, I'm just wondering. It's likely. Yeah. Um, so Vishakha. So that is, Vishakha was also called as Radha, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yes. Right? Yeah. So, and you, if you look at all the names of the Sakis, the Ashta Sakis, uh, you know, um, which uh, Radha, Srimati Radha Rani has, there is Vishaka Shaki, there is Champa, Champaka Lata Shaki, there is Chitra, Tunga, Tunga Vidya, Hindu Lekha, Ranga Devi, and Su Devi. So many of these Nakshatra names are coming. Even when you look at, uh, you know, Lalita Devi, the Manjaris who are under her, you know, um, Manjaris are like uh, servants or those people who uh, are also in the devotion to Lord Krishna. There is Dhanishta as well. So it's very strange to see all these nakshatra names coming up. And when you see them, then you will understand what is all this nakshatra is about. This nakshatra is about that corporation. It's about that unconditional love. You know, which I'm sure, you know, E.G. is going to touch upon and she's going to talk more in terms of Rig Veda. <laughs> and it's very strange to see that Lalita Devi and her residence, as per the text, is situated in the northern side of a lotus-shaped, uh, you know, um, garden, and it's called Yoga Pita, which consists of eight petals. And it's very surprising to see this connection with lotus flower, with this. Okay, so this nakshatra was called as the Rohini nakshatra of the southern hemisphere. Okay, and when you see what is Anuradha, Anu means what which follows, right? So what which follows Radha. So she's following Radha or she's subsequent success. It's called the star of success. It's also sometimes said a tiny spark. It's the spark which brings the two lovers together. You know, if you read about Lalita Devi, who is the jester, she's like the eldest amongst all of them, amongst all the Sakis. So, Radhana, this is the Shakti which resides in Anuradha Nakshatra, which is called as the Radhana Shakti. Radhana is speech. It's about pleasure. It's about acquisition. It's about, you know, propitiating. It's about all of that which is connected to, uh, you know, this Nakshatra. Accomplishing anything is Radhana Shakti. It's that Shakti which you want to worship. And one more concept I want to say when you talk about Mitra is Mitra is always referred to with Varuna in Rig Veda. And this is called as they are called as the compound pair. And in Sanskrit, they're called as Dwandvas. Devata Dwandva. Devata Dwandva means these are compound. They are together. It's like one body with two heads, one torso and two heads. Okay, they are not two different um, devatas. They are actually one devata, in fact. Okay, they are the principal guardians. Varuna is the principal guardian of the darkness. And Mitra, you see, often is referred to the daylight. He's always invoked uh, with, you know, the other uh, important solar deities like Savitur, with Ashwini Kumaras, with Usha, you know. And Varuna is called uh, the lord of the dark sun. He rules over the night and both are about order, the cosmic laws. It's about hold, holding the sacredness which links the man with the heavens. So Mitra, he is more like the, uh, you know, the one who holds the things together. It's about bringing people together. And if you remember uh, the, the mythology of how Mitra was born and how Varuna was born. It go uh, sorry, it's not Mitra or Varuna. 
uh, you know once mitra and varuna were taking a stroll by a ocean and they came across a celestial nymph and uh, her name was urvashi if i'm right and both of them fell for urvashi and they had a fight over urvashi and both of them they came out from their you know devata dwanda is the compound pair that which which was connecting them and both of them tried to woo urvashi and urvashi obviously fell for mitra because of his friendship and cordiality and you know uh, sensuality and all of that and varuna felt uh, sorry uh, varuna felt rejected and uh, in this whole process some seeds of varuna fell on the earth and uh, urvashi scooped uh, the seeds of varuna and kept it in a pot and from the pot was born kumbha sambhava or agatsya rishi he was also called as kumbhaja kumbhaja means somebody ja means anything which comes with the suffix ja which means birth from pindaja that's why we do pindadan when you do uh, when you give pinda pinda means the womb we are giving you know reverence to the womb when you're doing shrad and we're doing pinda pindadan we're doing you know pindaja so all of us who are born from a womb are called pindajas likewise we have udbijas you know all those things which are born from seeds so similarly kumbaja agatsya rishi was called kumbha sambhava or kumbaja and mitra's son was called as vashishta rishi and we can see the traits of mitra and vashishta vashishta always ha- was loggerheads with a great raja rishi his name was uh, vishwamitra he was then elevated to the position of maharishi and from there it was under the guidance of vashishta rishi he was elevated to become a brahma rishi okay the highest position somebody can achieve so it's all about vashishta was all about you know being fr- it was all about friendship for vishwamitra it was always a competition it it's was a- interesting dr pai you say so if you put anuradha in the first house then his son vashishta will be Pisces in the in the fifth house. Uttarabhadra, Uttarabhadra Pada. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Pisces, which is again ninth from the Punarvasu. Punarvasu is Lord Ram. Mm. Ninth from Punarvasu, Lord Ram's guru. Mm. Is again Vashishtha. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So both Pada of Punarvasu. Correct. Is there is in Cancer, so it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's very it's very strange that you see whatever this combination, and I've always seen some great correlations when you look with uh, when you look at um, you know Mitra and Varuna. Okay, so Sata Bishak and you know um, Anuradha. I've seen many combinations come there, and I think Yuji is going to talk about some of those combinations from her observations that she has had from her practice. and also what i've seen similar combinations i've seen with um bharani nakshatra and very strangely puru falguni nakshatra you know it's like saying here these are kind of uh, uh, you know comrades and there you have yama and in the olden system of nakshatras puru falguni was associated with aryama and now there has been a switch which has happened between bhaga and aryama it was initially aryama was and aryama was is called as a king of the ancestors okay so there is some correlation between puru falguni and bharani and i see all these four kind of you know um, create a so- solid order so if you look you know varuna and uh, mitra their order on the earth plane it's the day and night and then if you look at uh, aryama and yama they they take over the order of the the other world the other realm okay so that's that's a, a strange combination that i have seen with this uh, with this you know but it's it's, it's you know maybe I, i'll add some more things when we go along but i want to say that this is largely what anuradha you know anuradha has you know anuradha was also called as the birth star of the sun god and when you look at most of the rigvedic texts 
you know varuna and uh, mitra were called as asurya you know it's a force of nature which can be chaotic disorderly and out of tune that's why they are called as asuras which means they are very powerful and mighty okay so originally you know varuna uh, was replaced by indra and he you know later on uh, we had other deities who came in but both mitra and varuna are classified as asuras in rigveda although they are addressed as even devatas okay so that is there is something uh, you know we can see with this uh, vedic pantheon gods and when you look at all these uh, correlations you know and i was just doing some study to see you know agni was totally called as asura in 12 descriptions in rigveda uh, varuna has 10 descriptions indra has 9 descriptions mitra has 8 descriptions and rudra has 6 and you see there is lot of correlation between rudra and mitra and varuna so i think you know um eve ji is going to also talk about some of those correlations that she has observed and she has noticed in her research work and um, yeah i think you know this is something i i'll add more as we go along maybe you know eve ji if there is something that you you had to share about this and uh, i would be you know happy to learn from you You know, Dr. Paiji, I'm always so humbled to even be able to talk about this subject. I, I just wanted to bow to the knowledge in all of you. I honestly, for me, I felt such an urge, which I mentioned the last time. I felt such an urge for a while to go inward with all of this because I think we we are missing a lot of little pieces, and those little pieces are very vital. Um one thing I just want to ask you guys a question and this is not to put you on the spot. Um <laughs> you know it it not at all it's not orchestrated for that it's more so it, there's no right or wrong answer. I I um I just wanted to ask you who you think the healer is in the Rig Veda. Have you read the Rig Veda? I it, it not not to put you on the spot once again it doesn't make a person a better astrologer at all <laughs> I would say Varuna would be the the healer Varuna okay. Well you guys just want me cuz this is this is where I think a lot of these things are they get scrambled okay so you would uh, naturally I thought it would be the Ashwins I had read it I'd read it before and um I was oh the Ashwins because I remember this and that about the Amrita and the Soma and they do this and they do that and um there's references to miracle working even in the Rigveda the way that they move but mostly the Ashwins are praised for speed honestly and the bringing of light and the oblations at three times during the day and these these kinds of things the healer is rudra rudra he's the doctor in the rigveda vaidya yes. yeah rudra is the doctor he's golden he restores the body to health um even the mahamrityunjaya mantra um appears in the section under the maruts which are his children in the rigveda they come out of him so um these are the things that um it redefines right if you look at a god of a nakshatra so you get a rudra nakshatra or ardra nakshatra you, you then you think about rudra as the doctor or the healer you're dealing with a different force than rudra the destroyer he said to have all knowledge of animals of plants of the water He's supposed to have a pouch, correct? Uh, of some medicines, Rudra. The vitamin, uh, the yes, the bag, right? Yeah. So, um, so there's a lot about Rudra um, that is is misunderstood, and I think when you get into Mitra Varuna, the reason I bring up Rudra is I feel that even though we tap the surface of them, um, the more you read them, there's some things that are obvious, and other things are very mysterious about this pair. and they were clearly um very elevated mitra and varuna were very elevated and um they were But called the other, also the other correction probably i don't know i'm just thinking third house is ardra correct so that is eighth from the eighth so can we say the death of the death the death of the death is again a healer 
A healer. Well, I think, yeah, and when you read this, Rudra gets a little bit of a different personality as well. So, so it's not that he's not associated with um, some kind of wrath, but it's not constant. He, he's got many other attributes, and the Ashwins have many other attributes than just being healers. The Ashwins is rather the interesting because it's eighth house from the sixth house. Mm -hmm. so if you connect all eighth house from the sixth house, sixth is disease. Death of the disease is the first house. That the first house is where Ashwins are sitting. Yes. So they have a very different way of being described than Rudra as far as that ability. So when you're looking at Mitra. One of the things I found interesting is repetitively when I was going back over the Rig Veda this time is that Ariyama is associated with Mitra Varuna constantly. It's the three of them. They're invoked together. They, they never close their eyes. They're all seeing law. And they're usually, usually when they're invoked, the, the, the person who is supplicating them is approaching them for forgiveness, for virtue, for things to be right. Um, they're, they're said that they hate falsehood. And it's very strong words that they, they abhor, uh, they, they cannot bear falsehood. And, um, you know, a while ago I had spoken with Kapil about Shadabashaka and I was talking about um, uh, Noor Inayat in Khan, who was a spy, right? And she was, she was Shadabashaka. And one of her traits was she would not lie. She would not lie. As a spy, imagine that. She would not lie. Now, Anuraya is very capable of lying. It's a keeper of secrets. <laughs> it's all, both of those signs are very capable of concealment because, and even Ariyaman, if you think about his duty, it was, it's, these three have a duty with law and the established order. Okay, but they also have a duty with, the, with selflessness, which I'll, I'll talk about in relation to love, because it's a very different love than we experience through, let's say, the personal love of Leo, which seeks to own, ownership, um, or, or something of that nature. This is something that is um, naturally transcendent because it preserves life. If a mother didn't love her child selflessly, we would have no life. <laughs> like if, if, if the mother animals didn't defend to the death, then predators would constantly take the, the baby, the child, and destroy it. So there, there is this, you'll see with Mitra Varuna, there's this invocation for protection. That is another constant with them in the Rig Veda, that they're invoked for protection and for the understanding of how things should be done properly. Now, um, this all-seeing eye that they're associated with, never closing their eye, you will see so many people in positions of having to see everything having to see everyone's secrets or having to hear people's secrets, counselors, people in places of pressure, um, people that make oaths or commitments where that binds them to a secret that may give them pressure. Um, you'll see Anurada people get involved in, um, in places of life and in great power often. They, they can rise in their career. You'll see many people with Anurada having great success and usually it's because of their ethics. They, they have a class about them. And if you're an Anurada person and you're struggling in your life, one of the things to do is to perhaps do things the right way. And I'm not saying to become a virtue police. <laughs> Don't mistake this for becoming, um, what do you call it, uh, false piety, that, that kind of disgusting feeling that we can get with religion and all of that. This is not about false piety. It's about truth. So if you're not being true to yourself and what you perceive, you, and you have anurada, this, you can get into problems. Also, always keep people's secrets, their, confidentia their, their, their confidence, um, preserve their secrecy, protect them. Um, you know, don't betray your partner by telling their, their secrets. You know, those kinds of things. There's something with this sign that has class that way. And when it loses that class, when it loses that, um, that character trait, then there, there comes a lot of pain for this sign because it, it's not a sign that likes to be exposed. It likes its secrets. So you said they like secretive people? 
Well, it's not that they like secretive people. It's just that they may end up in positions where they're dealing with secrets and mysteries and sensitive information, um, places of pressure, you know, where there's a lot of pressure on their head and they have to perform and, and keep keep their secret, secrets of others. But if you notice a lot in the Rig Veda as well, there's a lot of invocation of Mitra and Varuna. And Mitra does have his own section, but it's very much like Varuna. It's, you can't even really separate it. Um, I will talk about one way that I feel they're separated in one minute, but... Um, no, I, I, you are correct because I, uh, somehow I land many friends with Anuradha people. And this one guy, I know, one close friend of mine, he is into defense. Anuradha, strong Anuradha guy. Yeah, exactly. Defense National and, security, yeah. national yeah. security, internet defense systems, information defense systems, encryption, coding, all of these things that you might think would be naturally Gemini, research, um, scientific research of all sorts, anything delving into the mysteries, astrology, so many astrologers will have something in Anuradha or something associated with Ariyaman or something associated with Shadabashaka. You'll see this so much. Um, the two matchmakers, the Uttara and Korva Falguni, I've spoken about before that you'll see very commonly in astrology. But I'm not I, I have all the three qualified. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this is this is something that um, I think that we we don't often. I'm just going to get my notes here, but it's something that that we start seeing combos that are really powerful together. Anuradha, Shadabashaka, um, or Anuradha with with uh, Kumbha Rashi in general you'll see someone dealing with pressure and secrets and those kinds of things um, and possibly in a position of power or position of authority that may have to be very diplomatic, um, you know, in some way um, negotiating uh, their position all the time or advising others and, and things like this. So Anuradha becomes the friend to all. And, and in a spiritual sense, you understand that the, that, um, that th this is a very different concept. It becomes translated in a different way. When you think of Radha, think about think about what it would take to love someone the way that Radha loved Krishna. It's not something that you just go spewing out of your mouth everywhere about every little detail of of. I mean, of course, there's the natural rising of of the expression of the love, but there's some kind of keeping of confidence. There's a guarding, there's a secrecy um, to the intimacy of that, that link, that connection. Um, so one way that I, I, I've seen that Anuradha and Shadabashaka, <laughs> I think the two have gone into the cave, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Paiji. <laughs> They've become no, no, I, I, I am here, I am here. <laughs> like, are you eating a Ditya Ji? Um, <laughs> I'm unsure. They, they're making up their slides. I, mean, I, I know these guys. You know that must, one must be eating, another one must be making some slides. <laughs> right. Um, they can't lie. They, they, they can't lie because you know they might have something uh, like uh, prominent in Anuradha. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it's common. <laughs> yeah, how to prove uh, how to prove Yuji's point, right? Right, so, like a lot of secrets and stuff. So the moment she says secrets, we all <laughs> dive <laughs> into secrecy by you know covering ourselves up. <laughs> and, have you, and, have, you, and have you guys noticed that uh, Anuradha <laughs> people lie? They can't lie. As in, even if they lie, it is pretty much obvious in their you know body language. Well, I've seen, I've met some Anuradhas that are very good at concealment. Okay, that's yes. maybe the Satabishak, the well, combination of Satabishak. Well, what I was going to say is that they prefer the honesty. They'll yeah. prefer it, but they will defer to cloaking if they have to, to get the person on the right path or to get their work on the right path. Or So, so that's what I was going to say is that Mitra being the God, uh, he's very associated with the sun. As you mentioned, Dr. Paiji is very accurate. I mean, all through this, he's related to one of the Adityas and a certain, he's considered the red ray of the sun, the, the one that is red colored. Um, so he, uh, he, he is invoked as a solar deity, and then Varuna is invoked as a lunar deity, as a, as a god of the night. And I've, I've said this before, I'm sure, so it may be redundant to you guys, but I'm just saying this to, for new listeners. Um, 
Mitra, I often describe as during the day when the sun's out, you see the path clearly. It's, it's right in front of you, right? You know, the stars get blotted out. Nothing in, is visible in the sky, but you see the path to tread. You see the path in front. At night, the path gets a cloak put over it, and the concealment of night illumines the stars, which is fate. And so this is where we read fate in astrology is through the stars, right? The connection. So Varuna becomes, in a way, the overlord, um, excuse me, the overlord of seeing fate. Mitra becomes the overlord of seeing the path. So these two working together um, illumine the way through the secrets. And, um, and, and I feel that, you know, when you look at Varuna, he's often given, you know, he's given a whip. He's given a lot more, he's given a lot more of an authoritarian um, role. Mitra is worshipped often even as a hero, and he's said to be handsome. And, um, and this is where you're telling the story of Orvashi preferring Mitra over Varuna, um, of course, because he's, he's, Mitra is considered to be more upright or a little bit more transparent. But don't let that fool you, because that transparency is where um, Anurada person can hide. And you'll see a lot of hostage negotiators, um, all these people that deal with um, intricate diplomacies where they have to be good at concealment, but they use the cloak of transparency. Right? Like a politician is going to, they, they, they show to the world that they're transparent. <laughs> but the question is, are they? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, one, one other uh, example is also the uh, idea of half-truths. You know, like uh, they will say like, okay, what are you doing? So I'm like, yeah, I'm looking at uh, this person's uh, resume or whatever. You know? <laughs> but there can be a half-truth. So these natives might be more inclined to say half-truth than like full-truth, you know. Yes, and, and yes, and they're excellent to confide in. So Anurada people might find them in, themselves in places where even their professional clients end up confiding in them or, or, or secrets or, or things like that. That's when Anurada is very strong in the personality, like moon, sun, lagna, those things. Um, and, and I am a believer in the Navamsha as well. Um, I know there's a lot of people that dismiss that and will argue with that. But if you start looking at famous, famous treaties that were signed, just, just start looking at dates and look at the Navamsha. Look at Franklin Roosevelt. Look at all of these people that dealt with very intricate um, um, and even some controversial negative um, uh, uh, past diplomatic relations like Kissinger, um, who's such a, <laughs> such a character that people love to, to, to hate. Um, I, I'm in the middle. I don't get involved in those things. But um, if you look, just look at, start looking at the Navamsha, you're going to find Anurada repeating itself. And why that specific degree in Scorpio, right? Why not Jaishta or or Vishaka, it's always landing in so here, uh, here you're referring to looking at the nakshatras in the Navamsha, right? Exactly. Yeah, just wanted to yeah. clarify that. So like fourth pada of the Venus nakshatras, fourth pada of the Mars nakshatras, fourth pa right? So you got Venus, Saturn, and um, Mars nakshatras that can fall there. And if it's fourth no, pada... I think, I think yeah, uh, Evji, sorry to interrupt, but I think I can concur with you, and I've seen this. Yeah. So very... Very, very often in my practice, whenever I do, I do a technique which has never failed me. It's a very simple technique. What I do is when people are speaking, I would look at um, the Hora Lord and I would look at the Sub Hora Lord. Yes. Okay. And unfailingly, the topics which come whenever they're discussing with me, the Sub Hora Lord and wherever it is placed, in the Navamsha or in the D1 chart. They will be talking only the themes of that and the nakshatra related themes of that sub, sub hora lord. Mm -hmm. And you can see with the time changing and the sub hora changing, it will instantly, they will change the topic and they will go to that next sub hora lord's uh, you know, topics. And all the themes they will be talking about is the sub hora lord's, wherever the sub hora lord is sitting, in their D1 and in their D9 nakshatra. Mm -hmm. They will all bring the flavors of that. It is fascinating. I've seen this over and over again. You know, and whenever it comes to the lagana, 
for example you know if some planet uh, or the subhora lord is also the lagnesh they'll always bring topics about it's me it's mine and everything related to them <laughs> so i see that you know navamsha and i i think classically using nakshatras in the varga charts is not accepted you know i've not seen anybody use them but i have been uh, you know testing them in the varga charts they give you i don't go beyond navamsha because of my inability but i go to navamsha very very much to see but timing is everything everything whatever questions comes i always look at what nakshatra they are asking the question and when i see i know exactly the seventh you know nakshatra from there gives me the answers to their problems and that's all i do i don't do anything else the only thing i know is the nakshatras the themes the the, the myths and the the deities the devatas that's all but I think it's IG, what you're saying right now is so relevant to mitra varuna because in in these hymns they also talk about how um they form time together they form yeah. the day, they form the year, they form the moment, they form, they're the cosmic law, ritam, right? Or rita, when it's said yes. in Namha form, ritam. So they, they, are that, they are that flow of time. They are that which yokes the sun and moon into place, that cosmic force, that, that mystery. Um, so I, when you're saying this about looking, looking at the aura lord, um, it just shows you everything. It's, a, it's an orchestra. It's, yeah. It's music. It's, it's just, it's, it's a it's flow. Yeah, yeah, it's a flow. It's, uh, it's the sub hora lot because the hora lot can be for one hour. Right, so the sub hora. Yeah. Yeah. The sub -hora will, because the sub hora might be for, you know, six to seven minutes. And when you're in a consultation, just looking at the hora lot doesn't help you, but looking at the sub hora lot will definitely give you clues. The topic instantly changes. You know, they go from family life and money issues to relationship or whatever and then i know what is happening in the chart it's just like a symphony it's just like everything is orchestrated and the questions are coming at the right moment at the right time when the subhora is activated it's so beautiful and, and look at the nakshatras wherever they're sitting all the themes of the nakshatras are just flowing out it says it's like crazy you can't even believe this this, this and you know, when you go deeper into even this, when as you're talking about, you know, uh, crisis handlers and you know, psychics and um, you know, uh, all these themes, what I'm seeing is, you know, maybe I've seen even negotiators, translators, mediators, um, and even foreign exchange lawyers, lawyers. Imm immigration agencies, lawyers, foreign exchange and currencies, all of these themes. But if you really look at uh, Anuradha. Okay, I have a slide. Maybe I'll show this later on, and maybe everybody can derive uh, something. You know, Dr. Kaiji, um, also travel. Travel, yes. That is course. a huge thing with Anuradha. If you guys have noticed, it's international, and often one of the things that is said in I think Brihat Samhita. Um, which I've seen to be true. I only like the things that end up being true. <laughs> but um, but um, one of the things is that the person may shine from far away from their homeland. Absolutely. Then, yes. Move from yeah. their homeland and gain success there. Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. And it's uh, when I show you that slide which I've made, you will be surprised, Evji, and maybe it will give you some clues as well. Maybe once everybody finishes, I will show up that slide. For example, I give you an example, you know, how to look at uh, Anuradha. If I make Anuradha as a Lagna, yeah. then the second house will be Jupiter. Okay? Uh, the Mula Trikona of Jupiter falls in Mula Nakshatra, which is the third nakshatra, which is Vipat. And the, uh, the exaltation happens in Uttara, Uttara, Uttara Shada and it falls in Pratyak. Uh, for Pratyak. those for those viewers who don't aren't familiar with this, yeah. it's the Tarabalam or Tarabalam. Yeah. The tarabalam. You, with the Tarabalam, I think you'll get great insights. But I want you guys to finish. So oh, that I, I agree, Dr. Pajji. Yes, yes. And if you look at the, the Tarabalam, you, what, get you said something about exaltation. What what exaltation you said? Uh, sorry, uh, debilitation. No, debilitation. Of, yeah. I, knew debilitation of Jupiter is yeah. Yeah. I knew you were saying Thanks that yeah, Jupiter debilitates. Even yeah. if you look, just Anuradha, 
then in the tarabalam concept all the rahu nakshatras become mitra nakshatras so you have satabishak which is mitra mm. then you have ardra which is mitra then you have swati which is mitra but the difference here is as you are talking you said rudra ardra okay he is the healer even varuna is the healer because varuna always has you know um, herbs in his hand and this support of water which is flowing out you know the vayu is the healer because you know vayu is the prana the breath that you bring in you know meditation i was thinking lord hanuman dr pai you know kaushali hanuman. hanuman sanjeevani, sanjeevani. Yeah. okay swati nakshatra and swati is also about a young blade of grass swaying in the wind so ayurveda now what you have to know is the concept of the tarabalam is first set of nakshatras fall in janma the second set of nakshatras fall in uh, anujanma and the third set is trijanma so if you know what type of healer you have to bring into your life to solve your illness is it got to be our ardra type who is coming from anujanma because you know ardra falls in anujanma nine nakshatras or is it that you have to get a healer from the swati because swati falls in trijanma trijanma means you know the the past anujanma means what follows like anuradha what follows is future and it's a present what is a present healer it's varuna which is satabisha anyway i'll discuss this ifj i think you know please carry on but i just wanted to tell you that you know i am uh, for now i'm I, i'll comment on the no, one more one I'm more query dr pai you said about the hora hora lord so that hora hora lord has to be seen at the at the place where the astrologer is or where the questioner is asking the question i always wherever the astrologer is sitting okay because you are doing you are, you are doing the reading isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. i am looking at the sub hora lord not the hora lord the hora lord is for one you know for the entire period it's a long period so there will be many questions which will come up oh, no, uh, um, you know and what is helpful now is cosmic insights has this option otherwise i should have sat with other things but whenever i'm traveling okay and somebody ask me a question sometimes i get some people calling me or usually i don't give my number to anybody but if there are some clients who insist you know sometimes and whenever i give them and they ask me a question i immediately go to the prashna chart i look at the sub hora lord and i look at where is sitting in this in the prashna chart i don't need their uh, nothing you know their their kundli but when i'm reading for them i would look at their chart and i look at the subhara lord and where the subhara lord has gone in the chart and from there with respect to that planet in the navamsha where it has gone which nakshatra it has gone so you can see the connection there how many houses away and what is the connection between this uh, you know that lord and usually okay i have seen many many occasions whatever questions they are asking is completely connected to that sub hora lord and wherever it is posited in the chart mm. in their natal like if the same person say if he is asking of course a person cannot ask the same question at the same time to two different people at two different positions but if the same person would be asking to a different astrologer at some different place the hora the sub hora will be different and the questions will be right. different <laughs> exactly the questions will be different yeah questions will be different the same person asking it, the questions will be different but what i wanted to it's not about what it's not about me telling you that this is a great technique what i wanted to say is everything is predestined everything whatever the person wants to ask is also shown in the chart there is no way he will ask you a different question he will always ask you a question related to what is happening in the hora during that hour okay so ej are you around okay i think i think ej is eating something now okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe aditya uh, you can go ahead aditya please yeah, go ahead yeah, yeah. it's nice we are talking about anuradha and anuradha nakshatra is shining right above i can see jupiter from my window and jupiter is very close to what i think uh, swati vishaka now and then clearly little bit east of it is anuradha So Anuradha is it Anuradha not south east of Vishaka? Is it is it at the south east of Vishaka, Aditya? Which one? What which? Anuradha falls, uh, you know, in the south east of Vishaka, isn't it? 
yes it falls out east of vishakha and uh, somebody uh, you know i remember um, you know some time ago somebody mentioned it looks like a uh, a cross serpent is it yeah, i have the picture i have the picture of that mm -hmm. and you are correct by because vishakha and then comes anuradha so definitely anuradha has to be the east of vishakha yeah and you remember as we go from uh, as we go from this point of uh, uh, chitra everything goes little bit south yeah it goes first so that means anuradha is south as well as anuradha is east of vishakha so that's mm -hmm. why you are saying of anuradha is southeast of vishakha is correct okay so okay. that makes sense sir Yeah, she is. She is back. Yeah. If you, we were thinking you have you went to eat something. <laughs> You're on mute. You're on mute. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just had to go do something real quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any anything anything any more points? Then I can go with if if any 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 discussion. No, I no, think. Please. Points have been beautiful. Yeah, I think just the other one is just real quick is caution and risk calculation. That's another very common thing for Anuradha, okay. right? Calculating safety, understanding those kinds of things. That was something I wanted to throw out there. That's But a beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct, E.G. Because I've also seen, uh, you know, a lot of planners, conference planners, mm -hmm. explorers, statistics, numerologists, and of course, we have a lot of. therapist like psychologist uh, yeah. psychics astrologers today, today you, you said numbers dr pat today you will have a uh, you will have a numerology class and all those things so i think everyone should have pen and paper because we'll do we will be doing some mathematics today <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm i'm sure i think i am going to ask you questions so if you don't have get some pen and paper <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm not joking. There will be some mathematics coming in because I don't know. I I put some at, at, um, some guna some guna calculations. I am going to talk and computer coding of that. I don't know somehow because we are talking about Anuradha. So I'm going to ask questions of that, and you have to definitely solve some few 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 questions. So probably I'm going to give you that. So if you don't have pen and paper, I think go and get it, or it, even audience should get it. <laughs> I've seen, you know, I've seen this uh, recurring theme. You know, Santip, you can probably uh, tell me: is all these people who have a lot of Vishaka and um, Anuradha energies, they always talk in terms of uh, binary, you know, because of the Devata Dwandas, you know, associated. They always talk about computer coding. They talk about, you know, computer language. They talk about yes and no, you know, and multiple choices and all of that. Yeah. I don't know whether you have seen that. So you know yeah, that's what. Yeah, I agree. That a lot of binary advanta or what two faced, you know, it can play out yeah. in a big way or like in simple binary thing. So I've seen that literally many times. Yeah, but yeah, so it's uh, it's very really fascinating. Yeah. Aditya was saying, get your pen. I want to give you get something. Get your pen and paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm really go and go and get <laughs> it. I'm not joking. Yeah, yeah, great. Go ahead, Aditya. Yeah. Nobody is listening me. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'm going to do my pen and paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can start. Yeah, yeah. Sandeep and Evi ji are not good students. They are not listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually sitting in front of my table, you know. So my other hand is on front of my computer, which is my pen and paper. So that's all. Okay. I'm a great student. I always respect uh, the guru's words. <laughs> ladu Baba, we must we ladu. must respect. Yeah, and you have to provide me ladu. <laughs> okay, so of course all these pictures are from Wikipedia, so need not worry about copyrights. Anuradha as Dr. Pai said it's a star of success and of course we, we can understand why i put the picture what is this planet here it's the mars mars is why why mars because anuradha is in the rashi of scorpio the ruler is mars and the uh, planetary ruler of anuradha is shani is so saturn and sometimes the symbol is also a lotus that's a lotus symbol this is our sun god aditya mitra so picture of sun and the astronomically how this the constellation looks like 
okay so first when i was looking about anuradha i was thinking what is the word of anu radha is made up of two words anu plus radha correct what is the word let's 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 take a meaning of that what what do you mean by anu anu is what anu is also called as molecule parmanu parmanu is atom while anu is molecule so that is nothing but the smallest part you know the smallest part of uh, or smallest indivisible or indivisible part you can say and radha of course radha krishna we know but radha is also called as prosperity or success so anuradha is like prosperity and success is each and every smallest part so that's what the little meaning of anuradha is probably so prosperity and success are some of the themes which you can see which i think if you also mentioned about success they they go through a lot of hardships and then they get success then the next anuradha the next thing comes is radha radha is of course the love for krishna so they have divine selfless with love with no expectation so that is something i have seen um, in anuradha as i was saying i was i mean a close friend which have, he has about 3 to 4 planets in anuradha 3 to 4 planets in anuradha in third house and very much involved in devotion and bhajans and 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 going into temples at a point we have to say him okay now you are married and now you have a family so <laughs> you have to take care of your of your family now uh, so he was that much into and his 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 parents were worried uh, at some point of time like this fellow is not taking care of his family and always uh, dealing with bhajans and weekends you go for bhajans rather than going shopping with your wife so <laughs> Uh, so that in that that much uh, you know uh, love for uh, of course it can be love for anyone but this fellow had love for god all then i was thinking about the deity the deity is mitra which we also discussed and what i saw was mitra is nothing not only in vedic culture there are many in many many other cultures also this mitra word comes and mitra is something which comes in the early form of rigveda also and even in buddhist we have maitreya in hellenistic era in asia minor we have avesta and mitra there in greek roman mitras iranian also has mitra so it's not just hindu or vedas or something which have mitra concept of mitra and the g here this is a really beautiful point because you know the romans had mitras right oh, yeah. and um the mystery schools connected there were very secret and you know that any member that was uh, any person that was part of national security meaning the army the generals they had to take those oaths oh yeah the- yeah oath uh huh so it's definitely the same deity and the same thing in the avesta or of the zoroastrian which you've yes. listed here um with mitra i mean he's a major deity yeah just yes. like in the rigveda yeah It's interesting to see how we are all connected. Yes. And I think you know, Eve G and Aditya, that's a very good point. And if you see in the Roman um, depiction of Mitra, he's seen slaying the bull, and the bull is nothing but the opposite sign is Taurus. Oh yeah. And Taurus is the natural second house of speech. That. So it is like you know, it's like you know, you have to be under the oath. Yes, Doctor Paiji, that is so brilliant. You just reminded me of something that I didn't want to forget, because I stumbled on this term. Is exactly what you're talking about, where um, they called the path of the moon through Scorpio in the old days in Sanskrit. They called it the 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 road or the street of the old bull. Mm-hmm. So you know, the old bull. right they make a point to say it's like an old person or an old it whereas taurus is that new the freshness the abundance the ability to give life the fertility on the other side where you come into wisdom is the elder right you have jeshta in scorpio you have um so so th- exactly what you're talking about as far as not being green meaning not being new or what do they say green behind the ears <laughs> like not being childlike in that way understanding the responsibility of the information that you carry all of that comes through scorpio it's very really, i have a slide where I, the later stage where i am going to talk about the themes and the nakshatra guna qualities so many things opposite of 
like i'm come going to compare uh, with uh, rohini mriga with uh, jeshtha and anuradha and so many opposite pairs you can see so exactly of course first of all you have scorpio sign in one hand and the exactly opposite is anuradha so seventh from it seventh is also the marak seventh is also the killer so here you can that's uh, so that's coming in the next way so that's lot in lot of themes we could see that the opposites of uh, Taurus or Rohini and Mirga qualities you will see in Anuradha and uh, Jeshta. Beautiful. And Dr. Paiji, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just didn't want to forget that. So please. No, no, that was a beautiful point. No, that's I all I had. You, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's always I, good to you know, make your point because that's what happens to me as well. Something comes up and I quickly want to add, but yeah. that's uh, beautiful that you mentioned about uh, you know, okay. Mitra and yeah. It's interesting, even Iranian, no? Iran names also, like they have Iranian Mitra. Like, it, it was, that was interesting. So, uh, yeah, one thing, uh, one thing I just had to add here is that uh, it's kind of interesting that Mitra is a, a prominent Iranian god, uh, you know. Mm. So probably what I might say is that uh, perhaps these natives might have some kind of connection with Iran, you know, something like that. Perhaps they might uh, go to Iran, something like Iran. And that, will, that might be happening. Perhaps like, one of the work colleagues is a Rani, Iranian person or something like that can actually happen, you know. Yeah, Mitra. Uh, maybe this, yeah, exactly. Ah, ah, so I think ah. that can uh, possibly happen. One of the extension of simply this, uh, or either of these gods, you know, like it could be like um, they might be working with a Greek or Roman person or, you know, someone who was, uh, whose ancestors perhaps worshipped them, uh, you know, something like that. Yeah. But yeah, great, uh, great uh, points, Aditya. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Is it, that's something which probably always it's not that first time we have come across but many times we have seen how ancient uh, gods and all they are all have common themes whether it's greek or iran or roman somewhere like a, there, there was like a common culture and how it got separated and all is something you know something which people have to do research on those uh, i feel it's it's, it's fascinating fascinating to, to see. and even in the iranian culture if you look at the god of the iranian Mitra or the what they call as uh, Avasthan or whatever they call it mm. is the same. It's a it's the god of uh, divinity of contracts and oath and you know all of them. They have kind of very similar traits that you talk about with the Mitra of the Vedic pantheon god. There is also something correct, Doctor Ra Ra. What is that? Uh, Ra. Ra is the sun. Ra, correct. So there are right. some European European god from. The Amun Ra, you know, Amun. the Ra is Egyptian sun. Yes, yes. So that is also sun god, correct? So again, Mitra, Mitra, again. Anyway. Yeah, if you see everything, uh, what comes Ra is all the the solar Vedic solar deities as well. You know. mm. Indra, Mitra, Indra, Mitra. Yeah, all of them. Varu, Varuna, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Varundra, you Varundra. make it Varundra. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the sun god here uh, with all the rays, and then this is uh, how Hindu <laughs> sun god. But anyway, yeah. So this is okay. Now uh, oh, that's my my always favorite thing of uh, the Pushkar Navan. Like we all nakshatras have four padas, and um, uh, somehow. Uh, when I was doing this uh, thing, you know, Anuradha, I thought maybe I will talk something about gunas and all those things. And uh, each nakshatra has got four nakshatra uh, and four guna, four nakshatra padas and four gunas. The first pada is dharma, artha, kama, moksha pada, which is, um, you know, of course, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, and then we have moksha, kama, artha, dharma. But anyway, uh, yeah, what I want to point out here is all nakshatras of sun nakshatras have their first and fourth padas. The first pada and fourth pada is dharma and moksha padas, which they are corresponding to Pushkara Navamsha. Similarly, all, all guru nakshatras, their second and fourth padas are artha, corresponding to artha and moksha padas, are again Pushkara Navamsha. The chand, so it's, it's very nice to see all sun nakshatras have are Pushkara Navamsha. The first and the fourth padas are Pushkara Navamsha. So it's dharma. And the moksha padas of sun nakshatra is pushkara navamsha. Now, when you say sun, sun is what atma, you know. The first pada is dharma, and the fourth pada is moksha. Again, connection with atma, dharma, and moksha. So they, that's why it is classified as pushkara navamsha, probably. In Jupiter, all Jupiter nakshatras, all the second and the fourth padas are pushkara navamsha. 
the second is what all artha and fourth pada is moksha so again the concept of moksha with guru and second is also artha probably so i don't know artha with guru but again that that's classified as pushka navamsha all ch in chandra and uh, saturn nakshatras the second pada is artha artha is again you know, wealth and so so saturn is what it makes you to work hard why you work hard to earn money basically it's not only to earn money but one of the basic need is to earn money so saturn nakshatra second pada all saturn nakshatra second pada is pushka navamsha and the venus that's again interesting venus nakshatra all the third pada third pada corresponds to kama uh, kama pada so we all venus nakshatra the third pada is uh, pushkar navamsha and rahu nakshatras all the fourth pada of rahu nakshatras again fourth pada moksha pada is also pushkar navamsha and this mercury mars and ketu nakshatras have no pushkar navamsha now if i ask what is anuradha nakshatra definitely anuradha nakshatra is, is a saturn nakshatra because the planetary ruler is saturn so the second pada of anuradha nakshatra becomes a pushkara navamsha so the second pada of anuradha nakshatra is a pushkara navamsha so that second pada of anuradha is important probably if a planet is there in second pada of anuradha so that corresponds to what it corresponds to 6 degree 42 10 degree correct second pada 6 degree 40 minutes of scorpio to 10 degrees of scorpio probably am i correct yeah i'm yeah, yes of scorpio that is anyway so anuradha planetary rulers of course when i said first pada second pada third pada fourth pada the entire anuradha this is again i as i always say rashi lord nakshatra lord and navamsha lord so the first part this entire anuradha nakshatra falls into scorpio sign the ruler of scorpio is uh, mars so all the padas the rashi lord will be mars of course anuradha nakshatra the entire nakshatra the planetary ruler is saturn so all the nakshatra lord is saturn the first part of anuradha nakshatra falls into leo navamsha so the ruler is sun the second pada falls into virgo navamsha so mercury is the lord the third pada of anuradha nakshatra is libra navamsha so venus and the fourth pada of anuradha nakshatra is mars uh, is scorpio the ruler is mars so if you see this this things here and if you i put the and of course the second pada is pushkara navamsha the third pada is pushkara bhaga and the fourth pada is basically vargottama because that's also again in scorpio sign so anuradha nakshatra is very interesting you see second pada third pada fourth pada of course second pada is pushkara navamsha but the third pada is pushkara bhaga and fourth pada is vargottama so it's very i think three out of four padas have have got something very special so saturn nakshatra here this one is really very very uh, interesting or very uh, what you can say very helpful or <laughs> positive and the planets if i put uh, all these planets yeah. yeah i just wanted to interrupt and um, probably you know something came to my mind i just wanted to test this mm -hmm. is there some link i wonder between pushkara navamsha and friendship and enmity between planets now let me explain if you can go to the the previous slide mm. i'm just you know thinking out loud i could be it could be incorrect but look at the the previous slide that you had shown you see the first pada and fourth pada of sun Uh, are pushkara navamsha so the first pada of all sun ruled nakshatras would always be um, uh, you know what um, um, sagittarius sagittarius okay so that's the mula trikona of jupiter yeah okay and uh, when you go to jupiter uh, second pada so jupiter is the seventh uh, nakshatra nakshatra Correct. so seventh nakshatra would be again aries you know so so it will be uh, taurus correct taurus pada taurus uh, navamsha taurus yeah taurus second yeah. taurus is where moon gets exalted and mula trikona of moon is there correct okay correct and the fourth pada is again uh, cancer so it is correct. moon's own nakshatra correct. so maybe i don't know i'm just thinking because if you look yes, at even sir, uh, uh, yes dr pai i think that actually makes full sense i think what you said is uh, only thing i'm thinking is like because there is some kind of uh, exaltation effect happening only thing i'm thinking is that for second pada of saturn nakshatras be uh, navamsha 
would be going to uh, Virgo, which is like a still it's a so friendly. Where there, is, where there is exaltation of Venus and debilitation of Mercury. No, no I mean, uh, the opposite. Yeah, opposite. the debilitation right. of Venus and the exaltation of yeah. Mercury. Yeah, exaltation. but uh, yeah. right. So I think that Saturn Nakshatra is the only thing. But still, and exaltation uh, of Mercury is also moon trigon of Mercury. Yeah. yeah. All right. Exactly. Moon trigon so, of Mercury. So is there yeah, some connection between yeah. Pushkara and this Pushkara and the Mamshas and why they were called Pushkara? Because no no explanation has been given anywhere. And right. uh, so this might Venus be... Also, Venus also, third Pada is all Libra. So again, yeah. Nuritrikuna yeah. of, uh, right. of Venus. Venus, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So yeah, might be... There should be some connection. Yeah. But Evji, did you see anything or is this just... No, I'm just listening because it's interesting. I see, so I do see a pattern there. Yeah, there is yeah. a pattern. Yeah, I but I don't know whether we, it's that. consistent. The pattern is consistent. Maybe there's more research that needs there, to be done. There's more, I think yeah. there's more on that because if you also notice that, that whole tree Murti that Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh yeah. always plays. So you notice that one from each has no Pushkar Navamsha. Yeah, so, I think Mars, Mercury, Mahesh. Mars and Mercury and Ketu. Yeah, yes. so Brahma, right. Vishnu, Mahesh, but in reverse order. So Mercury, right. Mahesh, uh, activity always, Mercury, Nakshatras. Mars, right. always, Vishnu. Uh, yeah, I think the Saturn, Nakshatra would make sense because that would be a Vishnu, Nakshatra, and that is getting exalted in Virgo. Uh, Vishnu is getting Mercury. Exactly. Yeah. Virgo, I'm so. saying, I, I was just listening to you guys because I immediately noticed the Mercury, Mars, Ketu pattern of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh again, and then right. Saturn is the one. And then Saturn and Mercury actually are friendly. They're, they're the two, they're very similar in some ways as well. They're both neutral. Um, yeah, they're, 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 yes, they're, um, they're interesting to observe. They, yes, yeah, so you've got the, the Venus, Mercury, Saturn axis point where all three of them have uh, an earth sign and an air sign to their ownership. Yeah, and they all deal with worldly matters in some very direct way. So, um, anyway, that that was just interesting. I was listening to you guys, and I do think that there's some kind of noteworthy pattern to look at. Mm. And that's a good point about Brahma Vishnu. And what would you say would be Bra uh, Brahma Evji? Ketu Nakshatra is Ketu. always Brahma. So you've Brahma. got remember Ketu, you have and, uh, a way to do it is moon. yeah Ketu Moon yeah. Jupiter is Brahma. Uh, Venus, Mars, Saturn, or Vishnu. These are the nakshatras. And then uh, Sun, Mercury, Rahu are always Mahesh. So they'll always start in the Navamsha with Sagittarius, right? Yeah, 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 correct. And then, yeah, so I just noticed immediately down there that um, we had that pattern. And as soon as I saw that, I saw the other patterns. I, and I was, when you brought that up, it's fascinating to me. And definitely the... the, the in the Saturn nakshatras, that third pada um, becomes important. Second right. pada. Sorry about that. Yeah, the, the artha pada. That's what I was thinking. Right. So sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think it's about yeah. deep meaning. One has to you know this is. This it kind of it should be deep, right? The, the activities of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh is not. It's not about uh, statues in a temple. It's it's about living. It's it's li It's alive. That activity is happening all the time. In in life, it's happening in our cells. It's happening in the air around us. It's, it's always happening. It's the sacredness of life that is recycling itself. So astrology would must be the same thing, right? It must have a, some kind of flow or pattern that is, um, yeah, legible. Yeah. No, I think this is the. I I would say this would this discussion would be the most important discussion in this video because we have never done this discussion before. Oh, that, there, are, there are many discussions coming now, Dr. Pai. <laughs> pen and paper is still, pen and paper is still remaining. No, yeah. but, uh, uh, so, so if I'm not mistaken, again, Pushkara is again Anuradha, right? It's like Lotus. Um, that's what yeah. it literally translates as to, right? The blue Correct. Lotus kind of uh, degree. So, and, right. that's what what we, were, we were talking about earlier, Santipji, before we started recording about the story of Lord Brahma, how he comes up and down the navel of Vishnu and it's the lotus stalk or the stem. And right, he, he, I think he, he was missing. He was not there. So you just, I can repeat the story. Uh, well, well, I, it's just when Brahma is first aware of himself in one version of the story, I think in the Shiva Puran, um, yeah. 
he he goes he goes down all the way into the the lotus stalk because he notices that he's in a lo on a lotus so he follows it down first and he gets no answers no the yeah. beauty he gets no answers is only darkness and this is anurada is no it's the mystery is completely concealed or, or varuna as well shatabashaka so he, he goes down 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 into the lotus and it's not until he goes down and comes back up to the seat of the lotus that he's able to have a conversation with vishnu so it's by coming out to the surface after going into the depths that he's able to have the conversation about his origin. So that, that's just very fascinating with the, all the nakshatras that deal with the lotus because the ancient culture didn't miss a beat with these cryptic, um, these cryptic uh, metaphors. Like they didn't miss a beat. And it's not even, it shouldn't even be seen as a metaphor. It might be quite literal. We, we miss the point a lot because we try to say, oh, well, we overthink it, and it might actually be simple. So um, that that's just because what do you have? You have Anurada. What are all the ones with lotus? Anurada, um, Pushra, Sutra Bhadrapada. Sometimes right. is it all the Saturn nakshatras? Yeah, yeah. Right. And the Saturn. oldest, the oldest uh, representation of Lord Brahma was Saturn. In the old school astrology, Saturn was the oldest. Brahma was the elder, the elder father, right? Um, and, and therefore he, he represented that. All this stuff that comes later or is a different version, but originally Saturn was linked with Lord Brahma. So there's, there's a lot of this stuff that if you start getting it out and you start piecing it together, that's why I wanted to ask you guys originally about Rudra. No one speaks of Rudra being the healer anymore. Yeah, uh, but uh, what's uh, really the last one I heard in a long time, huh? Well, no, no, right. It's a, it's fascinating. You talked about the the stock before I forget. You know, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> all of it's like the stock of the lotus. I and because the connection you're saying with all Saturn rule nakshatras with Brahma, I'm wondering if there are problems with the fallopian tube and procreation with yeah, Anuraga yeah, and all this. Right. I'm going to nakshatras. talk about that in in. Yeah, but good point. Yeah, uh, just uh, just one 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 thing, uh, UG was that in the story of Brahma and Lotus, uh, you know, it's kind of fascinating if you look at Andrada, and in Nakshatra that is directly opposite to his, to his Rohini. I think uh, Aditya will make slow it, show it as a slide. Yeah. And Rohini has come to it, Prajapati or Brahma too, you know. So that's Correct. interesting. Interesting, thing. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very fascinating, and True. it it the the Brahma right Brahma is said to be the the god that is still evolving because Brahma is seeing through all of our eyes. The, you know the, the that area Brahma seated. So um, it's there's a great mystery to this, and it just should never be treated as if it's it's a language, and it's a language of the universe. That's what's so amazing. It's so beautiful about it. That's what's <laughs> made me want to go inside again and not not um, talk about it so much until I really know what's going on. <laughs> Because it's you could follow it. It's like Brahma going down deep into. But if I, again, now connect to that fallopian tubes with uh, what Doctor Pai said and Brahma, the creation, the creation. Absolutely, the I think that's and Moon. Remember Moon here, because Moon is growth of the fetus. Moon is Moon is Absolutely. that. Yeah. It is the fertility. So that's a brilliant point. Abs in medical, absolutely brilliant point. I think I will going to touch that. I will be touching. Yeah, medical because it looks like the serpent. UG, when you were not there, if you look at the four stars of Anuradha, they look like two serpents. Oh, Aditi, can you show me that again? <laughs> if you yeah. guys can bear it. <laughs> no, I have that. I have. I've not yet started my astronomy section. Oh, so big. Yes. And it's so funny. Every time I go outside at night, I feel like the Scorpio is rising in the east. So I'm always seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's right now. I could see from my window. In the southern yeah. hemisphere where we are right now, Aditi G, in the south, yeah, of America, yeah. you it's see Scorpio. Really now. Yeah. Raining and then you have Jupiter right now. So yeah. right now, I, I think I have Anuradha on my head right now. It is crossing the meridian. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, because I just saw it before I entered, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should see my sky view where, <laughs> where Anuradha is probably. <laughs> almost almost uh, on my head right now, meridian line. So, interesting. I think I think when we all, I think I triggered everyone's Anuradha point, I guess, now. 
<laughs> my only worry is this is going to be the next uh, Bollywood movie. I think it's going to be the biggest Bollywood movie ever, blockbuster. <laughs> we have to break the three-hour record, still, correct? We still have, uh, you know, uh, you know, he's still halfway through, and we still have, uh, you know, Santip to come. I think that's uh, making of the next pop blockbuster. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We'll have to see what happens. So uh, it'll be interesting. Let's see. Maybe yeah. a thriller this time. <laughs> I think. I think definitely we all have something in Anuradha, probably. So probably it will be everyone's. Everyone will be giving. <laughs> Can everyone say that planets in Anuradha as well? Um, there's always some challenge. There's always some challenge to them. Yeah. Some something, something's going to happen related to those planets because there's got to be pressure. I've noticed that. Something's going to happen to put pressure on the karka of that planet to make it grow or to bloom. Um, I've just noticed, and it, it can end up being the most beautiful planet in the entire horoscope. Once again, the lotus. But it, it needs time. It needs to go into the cave. It's like Brahma going down into the, the lotus stalk before he realizes that he can come out. Um, or that, that he's going to get more answers by coming to the surface, which is interesting because that's simplicity. I mean, really, it's just looking at things as they are, going to the surface, <laughs> looking at them at face value. But I think Anurata's tendency is to go very deep and to get heavily involved in things, almost obsessively at times. Like the first Pada is said to be passionate, passionately obsessive um, in some way, specifically, and I'm sure that that's the solar, uh, the Leo combination with it. Um, but um, it, on Anurada itself, it likes to go so deep into things um, and, and get so it's sad. It's natural eighth house, correct? It's natural eighth house too. Oh, yeah, the heart of it. Yeah. The heart of it. So um, I think it's by going down and then, or, or going up and coming down or going down and coming up. Either way, it's by that ascending and descending or descending and ascending that Anurada becomes refined. Okay. And sometimes that's painful, specifically men that have Venus there, I've seen a lot, or women that have Jupiter there, um, right? So the, the karka of the spouse, um, or, you know, you see these natural karkas, sometimes it'll be the closest person to you in your life, um, but it, does, it could be the trials you, you have to go through, through that doorway before you... You, um, attend. you were saying, correct? Anuradha people, of course, it's not uh, very general, but they will have some problems in getting, getting the, their love life. Probably, is it? Radha never got Krishna, correct? Well, there's a longing. Yes, I think that there there can be a deep, deep longing and a privacy around the love life as well, um, because Radha was married. You know that I was reading in Times of India. Child. Came up, yeah. She was married to another man, in fact. A Kali worshipper, according to a lot of the, um, a devotee of Mother Kali. So, I mean, according to some of the northern, uh, like in, in near Bengal and all that, I've heard those stories told that way. Um, but uh, but yeah, he was com from a completely different uh, mindset of Lord Krishna as well. So um, it, she had the privacy, once again, the concealment of the night. Varuna became their friend. In some way, this Mitra Varuna is always playing out. But this is what I mean about being Radha. It is not just, it is not just being, um, you know, the one that is adored. It's actually, the minute you become Radha, you accept the thorns, right? You're not just accepting the rose. You're accepting the thorns in some way. So I think Anuradha people do go through trials in some way to um, refine the character of their devotion and love. Yeah, and that may be yeah usually you, yeah. Can, you can point in. Yeah, I'll just say I'll just say that uh, I, I'll just say yeah I'll just say it right now itself. So I think Doctor Pai was the one who mentioned that uh, yeah, about uh, Krishna and Radha connection. And then one thing though was which is interesting is that uh, usually these natives might have a failed love life, you know, something like that. They might have at least one love life or one lover who they are incredibly devoted to but that they will never get their krishna you know like how radha will never get her krishna you know so they have to go through something like that i think people will be panicking i have seen them yeah. get it i have seen right. them get it but the, here's the thing that there's always a sacrifice right. like uh radha did get krishna actually she got him right right in the end yeah 
Um, and, and as a matter of fact, he elevated her above all of his other wives and everything, but she had to go through the dark night of the soul. She right. had to pass through the separation. The separation is what refined her and her privacy. You know, I've, I've often quoted that Radha has no friends. There's that old saying. And it's not that Radha's not gentle or, or all of the things that, that, that they say she was. It's that her devotion is just so one pointed that the minute your devotion becomes like that, that is going to be your trial. <laughs> you see that point, something in Paipadati Sandeep, if you put. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you yeah, what I, I have. Yeah. Uh, I'll just yeah. add and I'll give you the remedy for this as well. <laughs> I'll give the remedy for people. Now, can you tell me if I make Anuradha as the Lagna, you know, what houses will Jupiter rule? Can anybody tell me? To be second house and fifth house. Okay. And in which nakshatra is Jupiter debilitated? Mm, it's in Uttarashada. Uttarashada. Okay. Uttarashada. And what is Uttarashada? It is, if you, if you look at the Navatara system, Uttarashada becomes Pratyak. For uh, Anuradha Nakshatra. Aversion. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is Anuradha connect, uh, Uttarashada connected with? It is connected with the teeth, the tusk of Lord Ganesh. Right? Now, I'll take you to the tree and how I do remedies is when you look at the tree, there are two trees associated with Anuradha. One is called as Bakula. Bakula or the botanical name is Mimusops elengi. It is called bullet wood also. Mm -hmm. And you know, Malus, uh, Malurasi, I think. That's the Indian name, what you call it, call it as. Or it is called the Indian meddler. Okay, these are different names. Uh, Maulsari, sorry. Maulsari is the name which is called in Hindi, Maulsari. And Bakula. Now, what is Bakula? When you look at what is the medicinal use of Bakula, is it is a danta which means for teeth and gums to strengthen your teeth and gums you use bakula so how are you strengthening your love life and fifth house is also children fifth house is also romance romanticism second house family and all of that so how are you strengthening your jupiter by using bakula and to brush your teeth with bakula and make your gums and teeth stronger because that is a cure for Uttarashada, where Jupiter gets debilitated. So for if a woman, you use the same concepts, uh, if you use the same concepts, you will understand that this is a beautiful way of trying to use remedies from nature. Oh, it's beautiful, Doctor Paiji. Yeah, because you know you've also got the nightingale here, and you guys all know the story of the nightingale. You hear speaking of Iran, uh, Santhaji. What a great point. Because um, the mystic poetry that flows out of Iran is is unparalleled. I mean, well, actually, some poetry in Hindi, I have to say. I mean, those two areas, when, when you get Urdu specifically, when you combine the two, you get this plethora of just, I mean, just beautiful, um, really meaningful poetry that has two meanings, esoteric and it can be applied to life. Um, but the nightingale is a topic in min, much of Hafez, um, many of his poems, and he talks about, you know, he says, no one knows the beauty of the rose, no one knows the value of the rose except for the nightingale, because he'll sacrifice himself against the thorns to get to the rose. He'll kill himself. He'll go against it and rip his chest. So there, there is this, there is this element of um, intense devotion, which Hafez says in another poem that love is the only redeeming quality of this brutal world. You can't find one redeeming quality. The longer you live, the less you see rede redeeming qualities. That's Saturn, right? The longer we live, the more potential to get bitter or to get desensitized and, and, and realize that the pain of life outweighs the joy, um, you know? And um, I think here it's very interesting when you bring in Anuradha with Saturn being the Vimsho 3 um, activator, and then you get the Nightingale who is obsessed with the beauty of the rose to the point where he'll he'll sacrifice himself and spill his life's blood 
Um, so I, I am curious about with Anuradha as well, Dr. Paiji, when you're talking about remedies, um, I'm curious about the um, approaching love from um, a selfless place, um, like character things that a person can, can um, uh, adjust their character. Like the nightingale expects nothing from the rose. There's no expectation. Krishna, Krishna and Radha, like Radha didn't expect anything out of Krishna. She just, she just loved him. There was, there was none of this, I own you. None Self of that. Selfless love. Selfless love. So I wondered, speaking of remedies, if these character adjustments as well um, it could be the um, understanding of what the nightingale is, understanding even researching these trees. There's another flower, isn't there, Dr. Paiji? Is there another? I, I, I've read Rama a... Kamal, Rama Kamal, I don't know what it is related to. Yeah. Rama Kamal, yes. But there is also another tree which is called Nakesar. Yes. The Nag Kesar, and it has flowers. Nag Kesar for Ashlesha, Dr. Pai? Yes. Yeah, but they also use interchangeably because um, I found out about this when I was doing my plantation, you know, the Nakshatra tree yeah. plantations. And we went and we collated information from um, a lot of Indian, uh, you know, forest departments from different states. And each of the forest departments in India who plant trees and who have their own texts. So they have used, you know, many of them have used um, Mesua Fer Ferraria, or that's not Kesar, or uh, Mimso Elengi, that, that is uh, Bakul, Bakul or the Indian Medla, they call it. So they've used it interchangeably. So not Kesar would also be for Ashlesha, but also I have seen some, um, you know, texts in the Indian Forest Department. Because, you know, different regions have different associations, and I've seen... I've compared it with at least three or four uh, forest departments or states in India, whether it's Karnataka, whether it's Madhya Pradesh, whether it's uh, Gujarat, and you know a couple of other states. What they think is the nakshatra tree associated with. Do you and think, Doctor Paiji, that has something to do with the um, the city's nakshatra, like the the time that the city was formed, the Maybe. angle that Anuradha or the angle that a nakshatra would be falling from, based Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that could be something there, you know, and what you said was absolutely right. You you know, you're talking about the character change and remedies can't change those characters. And many a times we were discussing this just before Aditya and, you know, Santip joined us this morning. Yes. And many a times what has become is my, in my practice has become more common sense. It's not even astrology. <laughs> Your advice is not based on just the planets, but it's based on common sense. Yes. Yeah. With common sense, you don't need astrology. Many of them things are, you know, trying to bring changes within them. That's when they can bring changes outside. You know, yeah. everybody thinks everything can be uh, worked out from outside inwards, but it should be, you know, start engineering from inwards and then move outside. Then, you know, the planets will always support you. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you know, cure the planets and their influence on you rather than trying to change within you. And then, you know, look for support from, uh, you know, nature and from the planets and everything else outwardly. But I think the change has to come from within. That's, and that's what why I, I feel that, Dr. Paiji. That's why I brought that up about the yeah. mystic poetry. And if you realize what the theme of a lot of the mystic poetry is, it's, it is the beauty of a certain kind of selflessness. Once again, not a self, not a, a self aggrandizement through piety. I, yeah. I want to emphasize that piety will always lead you astray because it's arrogant, right? It, it has, it's not, it's not, um, it, it's not humble. So I, I think when you're dealing with selflessness, it's not a joke. It's one of the most, <laughs> some of the hardest things for a human being to do. It's, it's war in a way it's war with yourself. Um, but it, it's also absolute joy once a person gets a taste of the fact that you don't have to own everything or everyone. You don't have to possess. You can just appreciate and love in a way that is um, is liberating. Um, and this is Anuradha. This is what yeah. it is. This and is you know, uh, I want to add something here for people who do not know. The beauty of the connection between Anuradha and Satabishak. Mm. is the tree of Shatabishak is called Kadamba, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, Kadamba. And it was the, you know, the love making of Krishna and Radha was under 
the Kadamba tree. If you read the text, you will realize it's the flowers of the Kadamba. You know, they that were tree. protected by fate. They were protected yeah. by Varuna. Once again, it's yeah. that nighttime. It's, it's only the, yeah, it's the truth. He threw the veil over them because yes. they were in truth. Their love was the truth. Truth, so exactly. That was the mitra. The mitra, the friendship of the heart, was the truth itself. And then Varuna. Exactly. Again, Varuna is about nightingale. You know, night again. Varuna. Yeah. Varuna. Nightingale, yeah. The beautiful songs that they sing, yeah, and it's 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 all that. Why do you think we like when we we hear singers? And if you've ever heard, you know, I mean, look at Indian classical music with the beautiful, like the the haunting melodies, like the Bhairav uh, rag, and some of these that just that express the longing of the heart. And you have the same kind of singing and uh, very similar but different, you know, different style, of course, in Arabic and in, in yeah. all through Turkey, Iran, all those areas of Farsi. Oh, Pashtun, Pashtun song and all. Yes, and it's that same wailing. It's the same, uh, it's, a, it's, it's that calling out of the longing. Um, that I think that gets us closer to our own truth than any amount of intellectual gymnastics will ever do. I'm remembering the last night, you know, Sedona night. You remember we had this one play, three, 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 <laughs> three, something he had. You remember that guy who was playing? Which guy? That <laughs> one. At Sedona, at Sedona, we had this last, uh, at the night banquet, at the banquet. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. That guy played. Yes. I did ask him the nakshatra of his. I don't know. I forgot his nakshatra. I don't know if he has got something in Anuradha, but. Three, yeah. three, I guess, what that band movie. Anyway. <laughs> and really, Anuradha is also, because you're talking about poetry, you know, Meghdut, which was written by uh, Kalidasa. Kalidasa, there, yes. There is a lot of mention of the Bakula tree, and he also used to sit under the Bakula tree and, you know, think about his poetry. Oh, okay. Kalidasa. That's and he's given a lot of mention of the Bakula tree in his poetry. So there is something that he gets inspired about, you know, writing poetry, about love and all of that, you know, Meghdut. That's yes. his most famous work of Kalidasa. Yes, Kalidasa. Also, I uh, love that you brought that up, Dr. Paiji. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, also, Dr. Uh, Dr. Pai, I just want to add the, uh, the plan, uh, uh, since we're discussing plans right now. Uh, Anradha is a Datu Mula Jiva. So it's a Mula Nakshatra. So it's a plan Nakshatra. You know, that's the first right. thing. Uh, second yeah. thing is that, uh, you know, second thing is that uh, it's a very straightforward thing, like to actually offer a lotus flower uh, as a, as an offering to God. So like in Indian temples, you can buy these talis outside and you can actually okay. offer lotus flowers. It's a very straightforward thing. I've seen this working brilliantly. Like whether it be Kali, whether it be like Krishna, you buy these uh, lotus flowers and you offer that to like uh, the God's feet. You know, God, God is the sweet or, you know, and then that is actually helping out a lot. It's like kind of a symbolic, like, okay, it's not just you buy, you pay the money and then you're just putting it. It has to come out of devotion. You know? Something like symbolic of what the lotus flower means, it's symbolic of what you're actually offering at the feet, you know, so stuff like that. So that's one, uh, just that, uh, since you're talking about that, um, the plan, that's one other plan, which I want to highlight. Let's not miss out on the lotus flower, it is so obvious with the, uh, Anurada, you know, so yeah. Beautiful, that's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful that you're mentioning about that, uh, Santip. And I have seen this is a great thing about lotus flowers. And I don't know why. I've always connected uh, Anuradha with uh, the family Kuladevata or the family deity. Especially in India, they follow, you know, all the, the families follow a particular deity. And many a times in my practice when I do readings, I ask them, have you forgotten if there are, you know, stringent planets sitting there or the aspect of stringent planets, ask them, have you forgotten your family uh, deity? And most of them, and they have issues in most of the areas which we talked about, Anuradha, which is linked to Anuradha. All mm -hmm. these issues are always there in their life. Because if you forget your family lineage and your deity, there might be something that might be. Because your, your second house, you know, oh, sorry, your third uh, nakshatra, which is your Vipatta nakshatra, is the Mula Trikona of Jupiter. Mula Trikona of Jupiter is nothing but that is your Mool. Mool means Mool Sthan. That's your origin where your ancestors have worshipped. And I always give the same remedy what Santip was saying is going and offering lotus flowers to your Kuladevata where you have forgotten. And you are not following that Kuladevata or that family deity. 
or you know for people who are from the west i say have your grandparents or your parents been to a church quite a bit you know they have followers of a particular church and have you not been going going to that place of worship so you know that's that's um, their concept of saying go back to the church where your family, family tradition perhaps tradition important yeah. that's interesting because it is a deva nakshatra yeah it's it deva nakshatra it is it is godly in that way it is that uh, that's fascinating and it's radhana it's radhana shakti the power to worship as well the power of devotion of worship devotion. yes absolutely yeah. Yeah, that's very fascinating. Um, adjustments to the person's uh, the, their perspective as far as what's important. Uh, many, many, many Hindu deities are sitting on the lotus. Correct. We see Brahma. You see yeah. Saraswati. You see Lakshmi. All, 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 all of them are like they have the lotus seat. See, yeah. what is the importance of lotus is because uh, lotus has regenerative properties. It doesn't need to have a union with anything to procreate. it can create from its own seeds that is why you know you see this whole connection with devatas with lotus i just realized i have been sitting here this whole time <laughs> the lotus, lotus beans. seeds yeah lotus beans i've been sitting with this right next to me the whole time i didn't even think about it <laughs> so this the top yeah interesting and, and let's not forget about there is a Uh, a famous thing i don't know whether it's connected with the uh, uh, anuradha it's called brahma kamal have you heard of brahma kamal mm. okay brahma kamal is associated with brahma and uh, recently i i didn't know about brahma kamal but somebody i was interacting with he shared that information brahma kamal is a very rare uh, you know flower which only blossoms on one night between mm. the month of july to september only one night and if you are fortunate to see it you know uh, bloom it seems it is very 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 fortunate because mm-hmm. usually it is a it is it only it only blooms in the night okay and only once in the entire year it, it blooms only once and that is by morning it goes away it fades yeah, morning it is it is shut if you see the brahma kamal in the morning it's shut but when it opens up it it's so beautiful to see I wonder if it's a certain cycle of the moon that opens it. Yeah. And very strangely, yeah, it's a, a certain cycle of the moon. You're right, EG. Mm-hmm. And the certain cycle of the moon depending on when the seeds had, you know, were seeded and when they grew and because of the uh, the moon cycle they blossom. So they blossom only once in a year and that's between July and uh, September, the months. Uh, in Mumbai, the they used to have that, and then some of my neighbors, they will, they will be ready with you know thali with arti and all. Like yeah, when yeah. it blooms, they will pray to it. Uh, pray to it. Night. Yeah. Because and it said that the the Brahma Kamal never dies. Even if you uproot it, it never dies for for centuries. It's like Brahma. It's you know it keeps itself alive. Now, how far it is true, I do not know. These are maybe it could be myth. but it's very fascinating to see that connection with uh, anuradha and we are talking about brahma we are talking about saturn and opposite we have you know an, uh, rohini nakshatra and again so brahma, it's only in the night when varuna yeah. again varuna concept yeah there are always it is literally like day and night dancing with each other Yeah. I think we are going to break uh, the record, Doctor. Oh I, <laughs> I think I'm going to go. Uh, you know, I'm going to put my I'm myself on mute and I'm going to stop sharing my video. Yes, otherwise we will not we will not finish this. No, discussion. no, Doctor Paiji, please stay with us. But we need to let Aditya Ji um, finish we, his. We, we need to yeah. do that math. That math is coming. <laughs> that homework. I think is. we're just trying to avoid the math, Aditya. Aditya. <laughs> yeah, <that's... laughs> I think we're. <laughs> It's uh, midnight here. I mean, do Anuradha Nakshatra in three parts, you know, three hours each. We could. Three parts, three hours. Okay, Aditya, please continue. So, so the planets which you see here, like I, I think it's mostly the Saturn and the Mars, and that's why I say it's a scientific bend. I think we pointed out the Anuradha Nakshatra natives are quick in, like good in scientific engineers. Doctor, just engineer word came. So Saturn gives you strict discipline and harsh, and the Mars is nothing but aggressive, dynamic, courageous. So if you combine all these qualities, you know definitely success is guaranteed. And remember what was Anuradha Radha? Radha was you know as I said prosperity and success. 
so that is exactly the lotus symbol so you see the lotus always rise blooms in in a, in a soil or mud muddy waters where the situation is much difficult and then it grows okay so <coughs> okay now this is about nakshatra gunas where we have three gunas um, i was saying about we have sattvic we have rajasic and we have tamasic and i was looking into the chart of barbara pijan where you have combination of these gunas where we have each one has got primary guna a secondary guna and a tertiary guna now each nakshatra has got some three gunas it may be a combination of all these sattvic rajasic and tamasic we will see how to how to figure that out and what so something about gunas i would like to talk so it's a very interesting thing gunas are just not they are placed but there is some order which i found so if you take so let's say take r as rajasic t as tamasic and s as sattvic and we have 27 nakshatras so these numbers corresponds to all 27 nakshatras what you do is basically you start so i think i'm going back to the five slides of sandhi probably you know remember which we did pi padati maybe a one and a half year back on the krs channel uh, so it's like rajasic tamasic and sattvic so what the each is a first combine all the combinations of these three gunas so the first nine nakshatras are like the the primary guna this is the primary guna or rajasic the next nine the primary guna is tamasic and the last nine the primary guna is sattvic so you have this rajasic nakshatras that's what sandeep you classified remember we did from um, ashwini till uh, ashlesha yeah, rajasic that's right yeah maga till jeshta is tamasic and then uh, mula till uh, till uh, revati is sattvic so you put just rajasic all this is tamasic all sattvic so that's one way so we got all the primary gunas the next level you have to do is instead of like nine you put now we are going to determine the secondary uh, gunas so three rajasic three tamasic three sattvic again three rajasic three tamasic three sattvic and again here three rajasic three tamasic and three sattvic okay so first nine 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 then we went to three 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 each so we were doing the same thing correct for for other thing uh, is in pi padati two so in that way now you got the primary gunas of each nakshatra the secondary gunas of each nakshatra now tell me what will be the uh, uh, tertiary gunas how will you do it so will be rts 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 right exactly rts 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 exactly so now you got all the all the gunas here so it's very interesting to see of course the first nakshatra is ashwini primary guna is rajasic secondary guna is rajasic tertiary guna is rajasic 27 nakshatra is uh, revati primary guna is sattvic secondary is sattvic tertiary is sattvic all are sattvic so rajasic to sattvic and exactly half of that is 14th nakshatra which is your chitra nakshatra which is entirely is tamasic so you go from rajasic to tamasic to sattvic it's a very interesting uh, thing so so you can say that now each nakshatra is for, for example this is highly rajasic this is highly sattvic this is highly tamasic this can be like this is what this is, if this is chitra this is uh, hasta probably correct yeah hasta tamasic tamasic rajasic so you can understand how much each nakshatra is sattvic or rajasic or tamasic now another research has to be done whether it what is sattvic what is rajasic what is tamasic and whether primary is rajasic what happens secondary rajasic what happens tertiary rajasic what happens how does it affect so when i see this i immediately remember about no coding which i was saying about the binary code which i was telling about so i i thought probably I don't know why this comes okay so i thought probably why not uh, deal with uh, numbers put numbers in this and try to I, I like number coding we are talking about another nakshatra so that means there has to be mass and saturn today correct engineering coding so if you code this nakshatra it's a very very fascinating if you take r as 0 t equals to 1 s equals to 2 you get all these combinations because r is 0 so r r r so 0 0 0 so this becomes 0 0 1 0 0 2 0 1 0 0 accordingly you just replace r as 0 t as 1 s is 2 now this is very it's it's exactly uh, if people who do computer coding and all now we have this binary code like in all computers all numbers 
if you have any number you divide it by uh, two uh, and then you get the basically the binary code similarly this is nothing but here you are not dividing by two but you are dividing by three so if you divide by two what are the remainders you can get either one or you can get either zero that becomes a binary if you divide by three what are the remainders you may get you may get either zero or one or two three three basically three because three gunas so the base is three here so that's very fascinating to see now what i have done here so let's say any take any nakshatra let's say you take anuradha nakshatra of course now this starts this we do cal, do calculate number one nakshatra to 27 but this is zero here so it goes from zero to 26 that zero is one like we start from the first nakshatra but this value is zero so we are basically calculating from zero so if you say like anuradha take any nakshatra for example today we are dealing with anuradha nakshatra anuradha nakshatra is what it's a 17th nakshatra correct since we are starting from zero we subtract one so it becomes 16 and what you do you divide the you divide the number by three same as you do by two so if you divide by three what is the quotient five remainder is one you again further divide by three the quotient is one the remainder uh, the remainder is two so it's one two one so you have to start like this one two one what is one one is t two is s t is one t s t which is exactly what you have for your anuradha tst so just by using the nakshatra number you can say something about uh, you can code it basically that's all if you if, if you remember this thing that's fine but if you'd like to do some coding and all uh learn i have taken a shravana nakshatra the shravana nakshatra is 22nd nakshatra so we have to subtract one because we start from zero so 22nd minus one is 21 so if you divide by if you divide by three, the quotient is uh, seven, the remainder is zero. So again, you can divide by three, the quotient is two, the remainder is one, but now you cannot divide by three because it's less than three here. So the order is two, one, zero. What is two, one, zero? Two is S, T, one is T, Tamasic, zero is Rajasic, so STR. So in that way you can do. Now this is what your homework was. Probably you have to do for Uttar Badrapada Nakshatra now. So what, what, what? Yeah, no way, no way we are going to do that, Aditya. Why? <laughs> <Just to> let <laughs> you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll do it for, uh, maybe we'll do it for uh, Uttar Madhra Pada Nakshatra video, you know. Okay, okay. I'll just be straight up, you know. <laughs> see, Sandeep is not doing any homework, you see. <laughs> but, but what is Uttar Madhra Pada Nakshatra? Like, what? what so nakshatra? it's like 26, right? Uh, 26 Nakshatra. But that will be like uh, Satvik so Satvik Rajas, right? So, Satvik Satvik Tamas, right? So, yeah, yeah, but so like, uh, so you're saying uh, 26 nakshatra, so 25, 25 minus 1, 24. So 24 divided by 3 is 8. 26 minus 1, 25, because we have 27. This is a 26 nakshatra. All oh, right, 24. Yeah, 25, that's right. Yeah. 25. So divided by 3, first you get 8. Uh, and then the remainder is 1, Correct. which is uh, corresponding to what Satvik, uh, you know, Tamasic, right? Yeah, Tamasic. First, and then you are dividing that by uh, further what? Uh, three again. Uh, three again. Three again. So you have eight. Uh, eight is left. Uh, what, what, wait, is that what was the remainder? Quotient, quotient is two. Remainder is two. So it, basically, it will be two, yeah, two, one. So zero. Two, <laughs> two, one. Okay. <laughs> what are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two, two, one is so, yeah. magic. <laughs> right. Two, two, one. Right. So that's very really interesting. That uh, two. No. What is uh, what is really interesting? Uh, Aditya is that uh, we tend to uh, think math. We have at least this is a purely mathematical, you know, system. Uh, Jyotish is mathematics purely. Uh, and uh, see, what you've done here is. The interesting thing was this is what the pi paddhati was. Basically, we started with this, you know. Right. I, the, see, right. we, 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 we know each nakshatra. This, this was known to us two years when we started really right, nakshatra. Right. But then right, how right, do we right. base that Rajasik and Satvik and... Yeah, see, yeah, Rajasik. yeah. That's that's what I'm I'm trying to explain it so the audience can appreciate what you've done here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's actually can... very beautiful. It really Yeah, is. so, yeah, what I'll say is that, you know, uh, right now we think in numbers in terms of one to nine, right? So, like, uh, but then the ancients were probably thinking in terms of uh, zero to two or one to three at the most, you know? That's what's actually happening. So, for them, the way they viewed their number system uh, was probably Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. You know, and that's how everything evolved from then. And then if you look at the Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh perspective, then, you know, literally, uh, then the mathematical system that would follow 
would be a purely harmonious kind of system and that's what you are actually demonstrating here in fact i think there are many techniques in jyotish uh, that revolve around uh, reminder finding the reminder and stuff like that itself you know uh, like uh, yeah i think the way you do um, the tambul prashnam right so you calculate the reminder based on some kind of calculation and then you get the reminder and then you determine what is the actual lagna oh the dash so it's like everything everything has yeah. yes everything right so it's like uh, definitely the ma- so uh, what you what you did here is very beautiful in terms of that you know uh, great that you are actually able to demonstrate that but what is actually what you're showing is that uh, there is a mathematical system based on uh, you know what you've done here is you have used a three system configuration right rajas tamas uh, satwa and then you have tried to show that there is a mathematical operation which is actually cor- showing the corresponding nature at different levels so it's very really fascinating concept now that uh, can be applied to many other things so what does that mean to the planets you know what does it ma- mean to like the rashis you know what does it mean based on uh, you know is there a brahma vishnu mahi rashi can you describe that or if if we are doing you now if you're changing the number of rashis to 12 how would you adapt that how would that complete system adapt you know and then you might have a different kind of uh, system coming up during but again, polar but again you always have four four either four times three again it's 12 exactly you know? yeah the the ancient the karma the karma moves is again four so <laughs> it's yeah, exactly a yeah. code it is truly a code right so it's like um, yeah it's like uh, definitely what you are seeing the code and how it's kind of reflecting the actual reality you know it's like this pure mathematical like dr pai was saying like pure orchestra really happening you know uh, that's what is actually happening and you have shown that actually so yeah great aditya this is great brilliant you know yeah, so i was Nothing like i was brilliant. thinking this is exactly like when you see rajas it was not like when we were taught like we, we did nakshatra it was like right. how to do, how no, to but see uh, now see uh, one one thing here is that you have used uh, you had to subtract one from the nakshatra number that was a very interesting point because now if you put in abjit right now it becomes it's the actual 28 nakshatra and now it becomes a 27 nakshatra correct yeah. you know so it's yeah. kind of an interesting thing uh, but you know but, but uh, 27 is a beautiful number 3 cube you know right that, right right it's right it is uh, yeah this is very interesting so you're saying anradha is 1 to 1 right so it's rajas uh, what's that it's uh, tamas satwa and tamas okay tamas satwa and tamas. okay so it's interesting i thought yeah. maybe because we always think because we had this knowing of uh, binary code it's nothing but same binary code principle i put in at tertiary code and with three and then right three. exactly so but, yeah, but i thought yeah. good to put to see the, the thing come on it's math and saturn So, yeah, yeah but it's interesting that you see some yeah. uh, numbers here it might be connected to some emergency numbers as well in certain countries isn't it right 212 right. in united states is that no, number or yeah 100 in india correct right one not one fire 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 number. 100 is maga no 100 is maga yeah. no one is purva falguni purva falguni is fire of the forest correct the palash yeah palash yeah. so yeah, that also <laughs> Anyway, so one one two is an emergency number. You can dial, you know, free. I think in United States. I don't know. Evji and Aditya. Nine one one. Nine one one. It's nine one one. Nine one one is the emergency, but one one two. I think if you do not have a telephone connection, you can dial that number free. Should That's I what try? I. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you don't have a connection. I think. One one two. SOS. <laughs> SOS number. Not, not. This is doc, uh, homework for Doctor Pai to do all for all nakshatras. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was, and because I was thinking about gunas, we never talk about gunas for nakshatras because we did so many videos, and of course we left Charnakshar. You know, I'm not going to talk more on there, but Charnakshar also we never spoke about in nakshatras. So maybe I would like Dr. to. Doctor G is very good about that. He yeah, tells. Yeah. brings it in it is something that i always forget as well but i do look at especially sarvato bhadra chakra it becomes useful as well so um knowing all the each syllable of the nakshatra yeah. actually yeah so maybe i just just point out the charnakshar for anuradha yeah, absolutely Naan, yeah the first pada is na second is ni nu ne like na ni so mostly the cons, the, the letter of n or na is is very prominent in anuradha so maybe 
so noor yeah it's uh, it's kind of uh, yeah definitely what you so now is narayana nambudri right so nambudri is like the brahmin caste in india in kerala yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. uh nee is nickel so you might find uh, names with uh, nee beginning having also common team so and rather playing out you know irrespective of if they have a planet or not and i actually i know a nikhil who is like very devoted and all that you know he's like a literary mystic kind of person that's kind of funny and noor jahan is also the famous romantic uh, character oh, right yeah. noor jahan movie right and nepal is also like this mystical place uh, this hindi and all that a lot of saturn mars energy there for sure and netrao is the name of a train right what is nupur the name of a train as well as the name of the river in in oh, okay. near mangalore you have that as dr pai you may be knowing near mangalore yeah that's correct yeah this this whole topic can be talked about but i would just like to point these other words so yeah one one thing i just want to highlight here was that uh, even nightingale right so na na eating gale that's how you begin so night nightingale. again yeah nightingale you know, yeah. so nah. that's yeah. again you know what you just talking that's one yeah. thing that's stuck in my mind okay like why is the nightingale corresponding with anuradha actually it does you know because <laughs> the sound itself is carrying anuradha you know so yeah that's brilliant yeah great aditya thank you for this yeah so i think finally i'm supposed to do astronomy i have not touched my astronomy part <laughs> so finally i will talk about astronomy thing how does how does how does uh, scorpio constellation look basically so this is your famous scorpio constellation you can this is the right time to see like if you are in in india already monsoons have started of course in the southern part but if in us and all like this is the right time to see the anuradha nakshatra because why because exactly opposite is the sun so when the sun sets the anuradha nakshatra rises these days at least for these days and the anuradha nakshatra is seen for the entire night so this is the best time so i will say maybe you sh- people should go and look for anuradha nakshatra it is just right here shining uh, i could see from my window and this is how this is the constellation of scorpio this entire constellation of scorpio this is your jeshta which we will not talk today for the next next class but this is your anu this three stars are basically your anuradha so we always talk about uh, lotus we but there is one more thing for symbol of anuradha which is the staff you know anuradha is the nakshatra is also for the staff because you can see the this three nakshatra is like the trishul probably you know trishul symbol something because three stars and this is the yogatara of anuradha if you see here delta scorpio the middle star is the yogatara of anuradha oh, is it is beta scorpio is beta delta and what's the other one is it this is pi pi, pi. pi. yeah pi, pi scorpio okay so some people take five stars 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 some people take five some these but these the last two are literally very faint but at least these three middle stars is of course definitely so it's like bright stars so delta is the brightest so this is the yogatara of anuradha mm-hmm. and i think you know if people um, are observant they will actually observe that evg has a big staff behind her she is already yeah. active uh, oh wow so <laughs> got the lotus <laughs> and the staff and the staff, the staff. <laughs> the staff. <laughs> yeah it's a certain <laughs> staff yeah yeah that's why that's a magical staff you know <laughs> her under the mitra staff yeah <laughs> and did you did you guys know that uh, you know the rishis in the past used to keep all their um, you know meditative powers in the staff even when you see in the thing you know vashishta rishi has a staff you know whether it is uh, venus shukracharya he has a staff and they always right. fight with staffs even if you look at uh, 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 oh, gandalf yeah lord of the rings yeah. 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 yeah gandalf 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 the wizards, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the thing about the the Brahma Danda or the the staff Brahma, yeah. Brahma yeah. it's actually a lot of um, it. It can also be as the storehouse of the tapasya, which is the spine. Right. So it also the Brahma Danda can yeah. also be yeah. a reference to the spine. It's an, as a highly esoteric thing. um so that's just fascinating actually fascinating. yeah uh, it's so uh, modern day staffs are actually wands you know like you can buy these wands magic wands uh, from like you know harry potter style magic oh, wands but they're also like yes. yeah wands yes. sorry wands yeah, yeah. 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 like wands it does what remedy you will give to anuradha with the staff what huh? remedy right what remedy you will give to anuradha native like go go make your own stuff you know like go do the tapasya and make your own stuff that's the only remedy there maybe posture <laughs> yeah. as well the spine 
fine. Yeah, it's fine. And what, shows, <laughs> what exhibits character? Anuradha is a nakshatra of character, of ethics, of policy making, all those things. You think of sitting up straight, like having the right path as yeah. well. Because um, it is said that uh, Vashishta uh, Rishi defeated Vishwamitra with his Brahma Dhanda. And some people will say um, that that is his, his posture, his, his, he, but it's a deeper thing, right? So, <laughs> but I do wonder about keeping a literal staff. That's funny. I, I wasn't even thinking this either. This is, <laughs> they're all showing up. <laughs> Yeah, that's that stuff. All your, you know, all this knowledge you must get be that stuff, probably. <laughs> and that's sitting behind you. You know, it's like the spine for you. It's you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but um, I do wonder, in in that instance, what do you guys feel about this? Because in in um, medical astrology, a lot of people will associate Uttarabhadrapada specifically with neurology and um, the, the, the nervous system that connects with the spinal column. I am wondering if Anuradha also then plays a part. Um, because now that I think about it, I've seen people with Anuradha that are interested in um, those kinds of, uh, that, that portion of medical. No, but think about Anuradha in the body. EFG, it's in the base, correct? It's in the base where the, all that energy accumulates. Yeah. Right? So maybe that's maybe the reason. So it's, it's, it's acting so as a base. The Rohini. We've got right. the Rohini here and then we've got the, yeah, the base. I just wonder if this all enter. Yeah, so energy. that's the base one. And EFG uh, and Aditya, if you look at uh, Uttara Bhadrapada, it's a karma nakshatra for Anuradha. Let's yeah. not forget that. Yeah. And yeah. that's where the mercury is also debilitated. Yeah. Nervous system. Yeah. Okay. And Mercury, if you make Anuradha as the Lagna, Mercury then rules the eighth house and the eleventh house. Right. And it's located in the fifth house in right. Akarma Nakshatra. So what is eighth house and eighth house results is all about, you know, the mysteries. What is, you know, yeah, all the eighth house, occult sciences. The deeper secrets, research work. You were talking about research work. Yeah. So that gets wow. debilitated with the father in the in the karma nakshatra yeah. in the navatara system. Uh huh. That's fascinating. There's always that link. And yes. I do think what you're saying about the literally maybe even keeping a staff. I think yes. but even if you can't keep a staff or you don't want to, I'm thinking your spine as well reinforcing that because of this. Uttarabhadrapada relationship that you're describing right now and it yeah. is something that when I did first begin medical research which I haven't gone into as much as I would like um, I know just enough to help someone a little bit but I there's so much to be done but Uttarabhadrapada consistently comes up with nervous system it, disorder. It's very, it's very uh, strange you see the constellation shape it's like no this is like the spine like it's like the the scorpion and then this is yeah. like the base you see the Anuradha nakshatra is like a base, and then this yeah. goes sprung from here, like mm -hmm. that. It looks like that. This is like the spine, and this acts as a base. So Anuradha nakshatra is acting like a base, probably. Yes. If you really look at it, you know the connection between Mitra and Shatabishak. Shatabishak is like we say the hundred healers, right? But I also think of Shatabishak as the hundred nerves, which come around here. You know, before they go into the what do you call the cere cerebral cortex, which is yeah. yeah. then you have Uttara Bhadrapada, which is the, the higher. So b basically, it's it's like, you know, uh, many roads coming into one and then meeting. So that's the nervous system. You know, all the nerves come here and from here, they go into the cerebral cortex, which is more of Puru Bhadrapada. It's channelizing. It's bringing yeah. all the fire together. Oh, standing all on road. one leg. Standing on one leg, exactly. Yeah, and you know, that's that's really interesting because I, I did find recently something where... Um, it, and again, standing on one leg, you're directly saying something about Purva Bhadrapada. Exactly, Bhadrapada. that's what Dr. Paiji is saying. So it's, it's converging everything into one channel, one pillar, one leg. And, um, one leg, know, one pillar, exactly. You know um, that when I was, I was going into stories behind Rudra a little bit and going into all of the older sources, 
and um, just making this connection now because um, that Aja Ekapad um, actually used to be a term for yogis doing a specific penance of keeping their posture, which is interesting, of standing straight on one leg. You know, you've seen that posture, right? That was actually a term that was used for them. So we're, we're attributing it to this God, this, you know, the goat of Agni or this or that. There's so many different theories. But actually, the original use of that word had more to do with a yogic posture for tapasya. And, um, and uh, that's just the whole nervous system with the Bhadrapadas, because all yogic practice is controlling those forces. Um, so there might be some connection with with the previous water sign before you get to the Pisces, the Scorpion, um, the Scorpio sign, there could be some connection for the preparation of doing those practices properly or the development of character because Scorpio is where you face all the darkness. No, that's very true. Uh, Evji, even when you're talking about Ajay Kapada and it's the vehicle of Agni, if you really look from Puru Badrapada, uh, Kritika Nakshatra, which is, you know, Agni, uh, becomes uh, the sadhana nakshatra, the mm -hmm. sixth nakshatra from Puru Bhadrapada. Standing on but, Agni's goat. <laughs> yes. I think, I think Dr. Pai's today's class is full on Nautara, Dr. Pai's. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and Dr. You know, Pai and I have to like stay away. We had to go mute because we're not going like, to no. <laughs> If we start going. <laughs> I, I think, yeah. is, it, is it Dr. Pai you are doing some Nautara research these days? <laughs> I think that's the next level of, uh, you know, the Padati, the Pai Padati I'm looking at. And yeah, I'm that's correct, yeah. Fascinating connection there with the Pai Padati and the Navatara. Now, for example, yeah, I'll tell you, on Mahashivratri day, the instructions given to you is to stay awake the whole night by keeping your posture and your back straight. Oh, wow. That is the thing, yes. So there we have the tail of the lion. <laughs> The moon and the sun. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Please finish that thought. So sorry. No, I'm just saying. You know, it's all. Whenever you're doing anything related to Rudra, you always have to keep your spine straight. So on Mahashivratri, you you have to sit the whole night and you know chant the mantras of Shiva. But the posture has to be always upright and straight. Your backbone has to be straight. You can't be slouching and sitting and do, doing uh, you know Mahashivratri. That's the first important thing, is your posture. Because it's devotion, it's showing yes. awareness, it's showing, it's showing awareness of, of that which you're, you're respecting. It's kind of respectful. You look in the Navy and the Army, all of those things, it's the posture, it's the readiness, the alertness. Um, and I'm thinking of how many Anuradha people have had problems with their shoulders now that you're saying this. Exactly. I have heard this a lot of uh, problems. I've actually written it down because I'm like, it's, it's not the classical medical astrology, but I've heard it from so many Anuradha people that something about their shoulder area bothers them. True. Especially towards the back, the, the burden. Let's, you know? Yeah, let's not forget, uh, EFG, even in the Navatara system, Ardra yes, becomes Ardra. Mitra, becomes the Mitra Nakshatra. And uh, Ardra is called as Bahu. Bahu yes. means arm. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So if you have to, you know, um, enhance the, the spiritual side of Ardra for Anuradha, because that's devotion, isn't it? It's by keeping your shoulders and your back upright and straight. If you don't, then you have back related problems. And that's so, such an interesting segue, but it, it does. It's important for Anuradha people. They a lot of times do feel the burden of the world on their shoulders, really. Barney is another one of those. So Anuradha is again backache problem. Yes. Yeah, you can see that actually. Yeah, that's yes, the, the spine. And you know, in, uh, Rudra's original Bar weapons were, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying, isn't Barney the, uh, some nakshatra of Anuradha, the Vidoda nakshatra or something, in one Sarvada Bhadra Chakra or something like that? It is the actually from Anuradha, Bharani becomes the 13th nakshatra. Right. It's a okay. nakshatra. It's yeah. it falls okay. into yeah. Correct. Okay, no, but I think from Bharani, Anuradha, from Bharani, Anuradha becomes some uh, problem nakshatra or something like that. Oh, some Argala. Is it Naidna? Yeah, it becomes Naidna nakshatra. It becomes a. Well, no, it becomes uh, Shema. You're right. It's the 13th. 
Uh, well, from Anuradha, Barani. Yeah. But but from Barani, Anuradha. Oh, from Barani. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so such a good point, Santhapji. Yeah, I, I um, I think that's good for Anuradha people to note just the posture, and it goes into emotional posture as well. Once again, it goes back to some kind of character development that's trying to happen here to prepare you for something else that happens later in the sattvic nakshatras. I think Amazing. we go and we will break all the records today, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today that's what I'm burning there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this was again pointed by Dr. Pai about the regenerative power of lotus. So I would like to just point about there are like so many new star formation happening in this uh, region near Nakshatra, near Anuradha Nakshatra. For example, the Centaurus uh, and I think the Crooks and the Ophiuscus, which is very close to um, uh, Anuradha Nakshatra region, there is a uh, uh, lot of new star formation happening. So one of the places where there is a lot of star formation is near, near the Mrigashira. But there's another place where there's a lot of star formation happening is near this Anuradha. And that tells me about the regenerative power of Lotus. You know, new star formation, new birth, and all those things. So that's another point to remember. And uh, of course, now coming to the Yogatara of Anuradha Nakshatra, as I said, the Delta Scorpi is the star. And that if you want to really put in the terms of um, um, the, the, the Rashi where exactly it is at Scorpio 9 degree as per the sidereal system. Okay, as per the sidereal system. And the sun transits near this star on November 25th of every year. So whose birthday is around November 25th or maybe plus minus one year and there, maybe uh, 25th, 23rd November or maybe 26th, 27th, November, something around near 25th. Their sun will be very close to the uh, Yogatara uh, of Anuradha. Okay, so make sure if you have any birthdays around November 25th, sun is exactly transiting uh, the Anuradha Yogatara. So I think watch for these dates if you have anyone, anyone's birthday. Okay, November 25th. So I was thinking the next image is. Yeah, just wondering, is it around this time, 25th November, is when Thanksgiving is done in the United States? Yes. 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 Yeah. It's around this time. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Any connection with uh, Anuradha? Well, it's like giving, showing that gratitude. It's, yeah, a it's very more like a, controversial more like Black holiday. Friday. More, more like Black Friday day. <laughs> Forget Thanksgiving, you know, it's like Black Friday sale day, you know. Yeah, I always wonder, you say in the United States, you know, forgive me I, um, for saying this. We say Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is for the Indians, the, uh, the original people who actually gave them food when they came. But, but what they do, to, they kill them. And then you're saying Thanksgiving. Yes, they did kill them. It was a covert operation, really. It was truly um, a deception. Um, because... Yes, I mean it's debatable. There's going to be people that don't like I'm saying it, like that I'm saying this, but it is the truth. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, these people offered their their kindness, and then they were they were exploited and destroyed. So, um, you know, I mean, their culture was uprooted. So there there is that dark side of Anuradha, I think. Um, with uh, once again, with th there is a deceptive, there is a deceptive side to this. Uh, Varuna too, both to conceal. And it makes me wonder because when I again go back to the Yogatara, when the sun is transiting here, and you say it's Thanksgiving, the sun actually, you know, gets exalted in a Vipat Nakshatra, mm. and that's become the Mula Trikona of Mars as well, which is Ashwini Nakshatra. Mm -hmm. That's the Vipat Nakshatra. Yes. So, th is there some connection that you know, these people wanted to do something well, and then you know, I know that it can be a controversial thing, you know, because people I, and I do they not know that they did want to do something well. well. They did want to yeah. do something good, and um, they were taken advantage of. So, yes, they did want to do something good. So maybe it might be because you know, sun gets exalted in the Vipat Nakshatra. In Ashwini, and that also is a Mulitrikona of Mars. Mars is also about 
what ha what happened to these people. Yes, you know? it was a military. I mean, really, in a way, it was a military operation. You couldn't say it as far as the military, what we understand the military to be now, or the the British fighting. You know, for it's not that kind of thing, but it was a it was a very deceptive, covert. Um, <laughs> it was it was very successful as well. So I mean, it was. Um, it's a very dark thing. If you really study the history of the, I mean, the U.S. is one of the newer countries, and anytime you get a new country, it's, yeah. That's a good point, Dr. Pai. You have, uh, yeah, I didn't realize November 25th, exactly the Thanksgiving time, coming, meeting people. That's, that's true, the Thanksgiving, yeah, it's, that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> So I was thinking, okay, now what personality comes into my mind when I was looking this November 25th? Immediately I thought about this John uh, JFK Jr. His birthday is exactly on 25th November 1960. That means son is near to the Yoga Thar of Anuradha Nakshatra. So son is also the Karak for father. So his father, his father was John F. Kennedy. So you see his life of John F. Kennedy, you know, themes of Anuradha. He was very friendly. I think he did a lot of I think, good things for people and all. So probably he's very resonating with, with his, his father's life, the, the life, father's life of John F. K., JFK Jr. So uh, it makes sense about uh, son is very crossing the near yoga tara of Anuradha Nakshatra. So that was one point, 25th November. Mm. Then I thought, okay, Daiti is Mitra. We have said this many times. I will, I will just skip this slide. Mitra friendship. This is something... Okay, maybe I will go here. Now, there's something which I was saying that there are a lot of themes opposite of Anuradha and uh, Rohini. I think Dr. Pai also pointed out Rohini and Mrigashira, which is Taurus. Now, it is said that if you take the Greek mythology, now Orion is exactly opposite of uh, Mrigashira again. Orion is Mrigashira. Is, uh, in Greek mythology, it's a boasted to kill every animal on earth. So, it was Artemis and Leto sent a scorpion against Orion. And it was Scorpion who killed Orion. Okay, so so Artemis likes Orion. That, that's one story that that way. The other story is Artemis likes Orion, and Apollo, who is the brother of Artemis, sends Scorpion basically to kill against Orion. So Scorpion killed Orion. So there are like two stories where again Scorpion is always killing the Orion. So it's always why it is said that because see Scorpio and the Orion are basically opposite to each other. So when the Scorpio rises. Orion will set. And when the Orion will rise, Scorpio will set. So it's like when the when the Scorpio is rising, what happens? The Orion is very afraid. It, it says that it goes away. So it goes and sets back. So that was a story. I think based on this observation, they made this story, something like that. But it's very well matching with the, the, the position of these stars and this, uh, this mythological stories. Okay. So, and then I was looking, so what is the keyword from this mythology? Of course, fights, protection, love affairs. This can be some of the, because you know, all those themes came out in that Artemis Leto story. So we can say that the fights, protection, love affairs can be some of the important themes uh, for Anuradha natives. Okay. So uh, again, I'm giving it astronomically. It is uh, opposite nakshatra. The fifth nakshatra is where, what? Uh, Ashwini, Barni, Kritika, Rohini, Mriga, the Mrigashira or the Orion is the fifth nakshatra. Exactly opposite is nothing but if you add 13 or 13.5, it's a 17 to 18 nakshatra. And the 17 nakshatra is basically our uh, Anuradha. So winter, when the sun is in Scorpio, Orion is visible the entire night. The sun is in Anuradha, Orion is visible. And the summer, right now we are going through the summer, it's vice versa. Scorpio is visible the entire night. So this is the right time to see the Scorpio. So Orion and Scorpio very much have opposite qualities, in fact. And it's not only about astronomically it is opposite, but I'm giving you some of the themes of Mrigashira and Jeshta and Anuradha. And there are so many themes which you can see that it's so much opposite themes place. Like the deity of Mrigashira nakshatra is moon. Where the moon debilitates. Debilitates in the Scorpio sign. What, what is Scorpio? Scorpio is nothing but Anuradha and Jeshta. Okay. Deity is Mitra and Indra. Again, it's like mostly Mitra is for Anuradha, Jeshta, the deity is Indra. Again, like the sun god here, sun and moon. Again, opposites, maybe. Planet, the Mrigashira is ruled by planetary lord is Mars. Anuradha, the planetary lord is Saturn. Jeshta, it is Mercury. Mars and Mercury, again, they are enemies. Mars and Saturn also. 
पुरुषार्थ ऑफ निगशिला इज मोक्षा पुरुषार्थ ऑफ अनुराधा इज धर्म पुरुषार्थ ऑफ ज्येष्ठा इज अर्था तो धर्म एंड अर्था एंड अगेन दिस इज मोक्षा अर्था एंड मोक्षा इज मे बी दे मे बी ऑपोजिट क्वालिटीज इफ यू टेक गणा द मृगशिरा इट्स देवगण अनुराधा इज ऑल्सो देवगण बट ज्येष्ठा इज अ राक्षस गण so again opposite so mostly the themes are so much opposite of mrigashira and jeshta or mrigashira and anuradha varna is farmer the varna for anuradha is also farmer but for jeshta it's a shudra shudra is nothing but a worker basically a laborer in someone's farm the trimurti principle vishnu which is to preserve the trimurti principle of jeshta is shiva again to preserve or destroyer if you can think in that way mrigashira the element is earth anuradha the element is agni earth and agni opposite doesn't support mrigashira the animal is female serpent and the bird is hen of course anuradha the animal is female deer and jeshta the animal is male deer but anuradha the if you take the bird it's peacock jeshta the bird is duck again female serpent and peacock again enemies so not only based on the astronomical position but also there are so many opposite qualities of the, of this nakshatra of mrigashira and jeshta so exactly so you can see the opposite themes playing here and finally i was thinking about human body and anuradha nakshatra which again which we talked about anuradha is the nothing but in the scorpio rashi is a natural eighth house now eighth house is what when you compare to in the in the if you take the kal purush kundali it is all sexual organs and what all the structures like fallopian tubes vas deferens spermatic cord urethra all these are like tube like structures in the body probably i feel that only two tube like one is this reproductive organs where you have like lot of tube structures and another is tube structures you find in your uh, nasal cavity and your food pipe basically then most these are where most of the tubes you will see for lungs or maybe maybe in the neck part and your reproductive parts they are all like all like tube like structures and when i say tube like structures you com uh, compare this with the stalk of that lotus which we we had that point and exactly opposite of anuradha as i said is taurus taurus is what again the food the second house so it's very interesting to compare you know the structures of uh, uh, basically the scorpio and the taurus now when it's i was comparing all different signs like if you take uh, for example leo leo is heart correct heart is like what organ a chamber it's like a body it's like a compartment similarly stomach can be a compartment okay maybe and then if you take a capricorn or aquarius aquarius is what the the below the knee and what is aquarius aquarius is where you have tibia and fibula and even knee is capricorn the entire body weight is supported it's like the saturn energy there it's supporting the entire framework the whole weight of your body is on your knees and the tibia and fibula region so that's very and then i was thinking about um, sagittarius sagittarius is thighs you know thighs femur bone is the largest bone the largest bone in the human body is femur which is in the thigh region where it's the jupiter's mool trikona basically and i always uh, always think you know when we were young uh, we used to take book on our lap and we used to study book on the lap book is what again jupiter wisdom on the lap on on basically you are putting jupiter on the sagittarius moola and then you are studying probably i don't know i'm just thinking about uh, uh, how how because i remember initially brahma and mahabharata you will take a lap uh, that book on the lap and study it so Purva basically purvashada purvashada yes yeah. so yeah. and it's interesting you talk about this aditya mm -hmm. you know the connection with the eighth house and uh, you know the sexual organs and the the other you know the fallopian tubes because if you look at uh, the nakshatra sutra for anuradha it says mitrasya anuradha abhya rohat parasthat okay abhya rudham avasthat wow mitra is a unifier okay abhya rohat means arousal ascension it's basically trying to create that uh, awakening or arousal of divinity within you it's not only about we always think it's only the sexual side of it it's about you know abhi arohat arohat means to uh, ascension it's just like jeshta nakshatra so it's to it's, go up and then down it's exactly. saying up and then down down uh -huh. exactly 
Well, I mean, mm -hmm. also the, the simplicity behind the reproductive system is sacred as well. It, 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 that is also beautiful. So it could also be referring to that beautiful ability to pass on life. I mean, as well, so there, yeah. there is that. The regenerative power, which we talked about, you know. Yes. Exactly. Power. Yes. So I think probably Anurag natives, if they have some malefics, probably you can say about problems in, uh, you know, childbirth or something like that. You can, you can. So that will happen. You know why? I'll tell you, because we're talking about uh, Anuradha. And again, I go to the Navatara system. And in Navatara system, Chitra is where, you know, uh, Venus gets debilitated. Yeah. Okay. Venus is Shukra, the the, yeah. the semen which yeah. procreates, and it is it is in Navatara system. It is actually the seventh Naidhana, which means killing of the sperms. Naidhana, death to the sperms that creates the problem for childbirth. That's interesting, Doctor Paiji, because you know the sperm count itself is Mars. Mars. How many, exactly. how many there are, how healthy they are, how strong their ability to penetrate. <laughs> All of that is Mars. And the fluid that conveys them is the Venus. So the reproduction, the, 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 that's just fascinating because here we are in Scorpio. True. And, you know, Ashwini, which actually has to give you that power, is, is actually a Vipat nakshatra for Anuradha, which is the Mula Trikona of Mars. Interesting. Yeah. So where the power has to be there because Ashwini is the speed with which the sperms are going to travel. But if it is Vipat, Vipat means it is going to create some trouble in the traveling of the sperms. And Ashwini is all about Ashwini. traveling. Traveling. It's all about exactly. getting from point A to point B. Point, point B. So exactly. Nakshatras do hold some secret with medical astrology for sure. Medical astrology. And that's why that's the next level of Paipadati that when you go deeper into nakshatras with the Navatara system and, uh, you know, map the exaltation, Mula Trikona and debilitation, it clearly explains to you what is happening with that nakshatra and what is happening with, you know, the bhavas. Uh, the Rashis, the exaltation, debilitation, Mulatrikona will definitely give you the answers for all these things that we are discussing about. Why is that, you know, these nakshatras have issues? Because it's the speed. Mul, you know, Mulatrikona of Mars is Ashwini. It's the traveling of the sperms. Because what is Ashwini ruled by? It's, uh, it's uh, Ketu ruled nakshatra in Vimshotri Dasha system. What is Ketu? Ketu is the sperm. It's headless. It's just traveling. It's one out of those million sperms which go and find a home. genetic code within the sperm. So you've got the, the shape of this, the, that which penetrates. I don't know if you've ever seen it under a microscope, but it looks like a spear. Yeah. It yeah. looks like yeah. the veil of carpet. The veil of, of carpet. It is actually the veil. It yeah, is actually the veil. The genetic coding itself is connected with Ketu, and then the transference through the liquid is Venus. So they're, yeah. all, they're all divided this way. That's why Ashwani... Ashwini truly is a very fascinating sign because it definitely does deal with medical and health and all of those things, but its first and foremost feature is actually speed and, and agility and ability to get from point A to point B with transport, which is, with transport. Yeah. which is a, it's huge, a horse. It, I mean, how do you get from one place to another that it pervades all life? As long as you have time, you have distance, you know, that they're related. Um, so that's a it's it's a very it's a very deep thing. I think the the that it should never be overlooked as just a little story. Oh, these people are you know horse people. <laughs> you know what does that actually mean? You have to ask what yourself. What does it actually mean? Yeah. yeah because if you look, uh, you know, we don't say camel power. We don't say dog power. It's always horse power. We horse say. power. Yeah, exactly. The raw it's power. The raw good. force. Yeah. Oh, I just saw, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then if you, if you really go and see Kritika Nakshatra, where, you know, is Kartikeya's Nakshatra, Agni, but he is the whale. He, he is the whale, isn't it? Kartikeya. Yeah. Okay, that's where moon gets exalted. Primal, From yes. Yes, wow. Kritika. Kritika Nakshatra, yes. So, but that is what? It is a Pratyak Nakshatra for Anuradha. 
So for those so of you who are watching and don't know this, you can easily look up Tarabala, but it's the third, You typically the third, fifth, and seventh nakshatra are the ones that Dr. Paiji keeps referring to that are negative. You've mainly referred to vip, Vipat and Pratyat, the third and fifth. Um, and the seventh is the Naidna, and you typically Correct. don't want anything falling in that space. Yeah. True. Okay, with that, <laughs> what maybe Anuradha is Anuradha Podwal, I was thinking. What she oh, would Oh, yeah. Have... She's this famous... Does she have Venus or something? Does she yes, have Venus? She has got Venus in Anuradha. Great. As for the bird, what is given she's in Wikipedia. She's mainly devotional. She's right. A lot of devotional. Yeah. You can think mm -hmm. of that era during that era. She yeah. has got... Exactly. So this was the question. And we, <laughs> the date which is given in Wikipedia, I don't know whether that's correct or not. I just went to that date and checked. And she has exactly Venus in Anuradha. So that's a. Uh, and I was thinking, what are the Lotus Temple in Delhi? We have this Lotus Temple, right? Lotus and all we are talking. So, what is Lotus Temple in Delhi? And it was at, of course, there were two dates. One was it was opened on 13 November 1986. Uh, it was, I think it was constructed, I was I'm thinking, something uh, that was, uh, it was opened or it was, I need to check this. It was, uh, but, but one, it was officially uh, declared as open and it was once it was completed. So date. So I think if uh, you can, if someone can look into that date. I'm 13, but on 13 November, 1986, it was, um, uh, Saturn was in Anuradha. So you can see how the connection of Anuradha. And uh, let me check because I'm, I'm a bit confused here, whether it was open or whether it was uh, officially declared. Uh, it was completed basically. So I'm just, it, it was, I took this date from the Wikipedia. So uh, I think completed on 13 November. So it was opened on 24th December 1986. It was completed on 13th November. So maybe I should correct this. It was completed, not opened. And on that day, it was Saturn was in uh, the fourth uh, Pada of Anuradha. It was almost like. Uh, So again, because I was thinking if it is Lotus, something should be there in Anuradha. So finally, my favorite is festivals. So of course we said about uh, the sun transit Anuradha from 20th November, 3rd December. And Karthik Purnima is one of the festivals celebrated during this time. Karthik, you know, the god of war, mass energy. This is the whale which we are talking. You know, we were talking about whale. So this looks like the sperm, you know, the sperm head and this long tail. So this is the whale. So the god of war, the Martian energy, of course, Lord Kartik is connected with Mars and Anuradha is also Mars plus Saturn. This is the time we celebrate Kartik Purnima when the sun is exactly transiting uh, uh, Anuradha Nakshatra. Then Ras Leela, that was also another thing which uh, also comes during that period. Ras Leela. The other festival was about Annakuta. Of course, this is like huge food quantity, man. This is, I, should, I, I, I need to visit this place probably. During this, it's Annakuta offerings to God. And what interesting was any form of violence is prohibited, you know. It includes even shaving, hair cutting, plucking fruits and flowers, cutting crops and even sexual union, they say. It's like all that is uh, um, uh, prohibited. So you can say that uh, concept of Mitra or the love and the friendship is literally seen during that time. So again, Anuradha Nakshatra probably. And this is, I think, my final slide where I just give the... Uh, Foundation above is also to ascend, to descend, to be regarded as friends of the whole world. Radhana Shakti, which is the power of worship. The result of Shakti, basis and desire was honor and abundance. So some of the characteristics of Anuradha Nakshatra. I think with that, I think that was my last slide. Probably I've taken the longest time, I guess. So I need to, need to keep my mouth shut now. Sandeep, Sandeep is patiently waiting for a long time. <laughs> I think we should do a 24 hour video. I think that will be going into the Guinness World Record with one nakshatra. Right. You know, just like we have this Breathless, right? That was a song by Breathless. Right. No, no, no. Yeah, Shankar, uh, Shankar Mahadevan. Shankar Mahadevan, right, yeah. So even the word Shankar and Mahadevan, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> Breathless. So we might, this might be our Breathless video. I'm sure Kapil Ji will be very happy to see a long video from us. <laughs> after a long time. Yeah, after a long time. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, you know, uh, so I'll just uh, cover some quick points about Andhada. Uh, I won't go into much detail. I think Aditya, when I say, you can just share the slide. Uh, yeah. For that, I'll just talk about it a little bit. Um, so you know, um, yeah, a uh, couple of. I mean, I mean, we killed Andhada to death. There are some points <laughs> which I felt was missing. Uh, you know, one thing was that uh, one simple thing was that uh, so some uh, based on like uh, some predictive points, right? So like. Uh, Mitra and Varuna fell for the same Apsaras. So there can be a possibility for um, love triangles to happen for these natives or get enmeshed in love triangles. You know, that's a very common thing. I've actually seen that working out. And as you know, like uh, even Mitra person might end up winning. Now, what is actually funny was that uh, Mitra and Varuna are both invoked together. So many times I've seen that um, whenever uh, Andhra Nakshatra is activated uh, either through Tribhagi Dasha or Planet Mahadasha, they might have some kind of karma with. Um, a person with uh, a Satabisha nakshatra, you know, which is because Varna is the ruler of Satabisha nakshatra. So I've seen that when there might be this Mitra Varna literally playing itself out, you know. So like uh, you might have a literally a Varna kind of person around you if you are a Mitra person, or if you are a Varna kind of person, you might have a Mitra kind of person uh, with you. And this can be literally like in terms of the names, you know. So like you might be friends with the Varun, or you might be friends with like someone whose name is uh, you know literally Ocean or something like that, you know, English Ocean stuff like that. And now what uh, what uh, Yuji mentioned about Ariman was very interesting because if those three are invoked together, then that would mean that uh, there might be, you know, like an Ariman native also coming into play. You know, there's a higher possibility for that. Those so someone with to together. It's right. Around. So that means that yeah. uh, there will be uh, probably an Uttarafaldi native also is coming into play. And that would actually make sense if you begin to look into that, you know. Uh, now, uh, having said that, uh, we talked that we, uh, Aditya talked about Mitraism for a bit. I just want to uh, mention that, you know, it's still going on. Sandeep, there is still a mistake. Uh, Sandeep, just to, sorry to interrupt. I was just wondering, you know, because you talked about uh, how Varuna uh, in the story that I explained to you, that he was, they all, you know, both Varuna and uh, Mitra fell for the same uh, nymph, celestial nymph. Yeah. And the story says Varuna climaxed too quickly. So is there any problems that you see with people who have Anuradha, they might reach the climax very quickly and they might not satisfy their, their partners? Yeah, I, don't know. I think it's potentially it possible. Yeah. Probably with, um, probably with um, Satabisha, probably with Varna yeah, Natives, you know. Varuna, right? yeah. 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 yeah, probably that can happen. Probably with Anuradha also it can happen because we are part of the same story. So maybe in one way or the other. Maybe something, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe they are, when they are in vacation, they might have a long sexual union, but when they are in their home, they are like stuck, you know, it's like they have to get it done quickly, something like that, you know. Venus, Venus problem can be associated with that, with Anuradha probably. Yeah, it's a beautiful right. thing that you see. Maybe at home, you know, um, Santi right. Pajami. Because Santi Pajami is actually fourth Santa house. Santi is yeah. the fourth house. Beautiful, right. yeah. That's when they, they don't right. perform, but when they go on a honeymoon or when they go, you know, long distance, that's when maybe they are in greater union or they might right. enjoy the union much better if they are, right. you know, maybe. Right. Yeah, that's so, a great point. Yeah, that, Fantastic. yeah that, that's possible. Uh, you know, so, or commitment or right. So, yeah, yeah that's actually hidden. Yeah. Right. hidden. Right. Uh, if you begin to look into the word Mitra, uh, like the Greek origins of the word, there's actually the word covenant or binding comes into place, which is actually what uh, great about what Yuji was mentioning about how Andhra is about uh, law and all that, you know, so that is great. But I just want to highlight the fact that, you know, Mitraism is still going. There are people who are still worshippers of Mitra. Like Mitra is a living God in many parts of the world, you know, so that's like uh, something to think about uh, really in terms of uh, Andhra as well. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that with uh, the Charnakshar, you know, with Lotus, uh, the species name of Lotus flower, the biological name is actually Nelumba nucifera. So it's literally like, you know, Na sound of Andhra is literally playing out in uh, Lotus flower species name. That's interesting. And then obviously there is the Lotus effect, which is, uh, I think UG gave a, a brilliant uh, video on uh, Andhra on Dr. Pai's channel. You know, that it's like, that's like one and a half hour video, I suppose, but there's a lot more details on that. So she discla uh, describes about this non-violent way of approaching things by Andhra. You know, and uh, so literally, he said he will find a way to do it without violence. Right. So this lotus effect is like the scientific phenomena where uh, you know the fl the water doesn't uh, touch the. It's like a non-stick uh, non-stick yeah. cookware kind of uh, water effect. You know, that's literally like a non-stick. You can't get more non-violent than that. You know. So there's uh, many times uh, that's one thing. 
and now same thing with lotus did, i've seen uh, sorry, it sorry again did uh, mahatma gandhi have saturn in anuradha i wonder i know it's in the second house for yeah. him right. but i wonder if yeah. anuradha not sure mahatma not sure i, I don't know yeah, maybe you might know yeah it's a very good point that you mentioned yeah yeah I so that's one mahatma gandhi ji in jaishta in jaishta right. okay something okay. something's in jaishta Right. It should be Saturn. So, I know it's Saturn right. in the second place, but I didn't know whether right. it's Saturn. Right, right. Yeah. Got Saturn so, in, uh, Sat- uh, I have, I'm looking his chart. It has got Saturn in uh, 20 degree, 20 minutes of Scorpio. So that is like Jesta. Jesta. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the. Real, uh, real is what Aruda Aruda Lagna, correct? Okay. So Aruda Lagna. Yeah, Ardha Lagna Nakshatra will probably, <laughs> you know, many people will go crazy if you talk about that. But then, you know, uh, one thing, uh, one other thing about Lotus was that, uh, you know, again, you know, the biggest uh, challenge for these natives is that uh, literally they, their life path is literally like a Lotus flower, you know, uh, literally they, and the great thing about Lotus is that no matter how muddy the pond, the Lotus will keep on rising to the top. And the important thing for these natives to realize is that they will rise to the top. They, they just have to keep on persisting. They just have to keep on going on, you know, and they'll rise to the top. And uh, one a great point which Dr. Pai mentioned in his uh, course about Andrada was that uh, many times these are the natives who find themselves uh, rising to the top because of their past life karmas are propelling them to the top. So these are the natives who are uh, like in the middle of nowhere. They might have very humble beginnings and then they might literally rise to the top of that field. In spite of like, say, you are in, uh, you know, you are like, like the village... Uh, like, you know, like you are in a village down in South India where no, there's no electricity and you still end up being the greatest scientist in the world, you know, something like that. Those kind of themes is very yeah. common and, and uh, fun. Saturn rather. theme, yeah. probably Saturn theme. Yeah. There's another theme that I've seen. These people rise, but there is a lack of self-worth or they don't believe exactly. that they deserve whatever they've been given or whatever they exactly. deserve. They think they've got more than what they've asked for. That's exactly. another exactly. Uh, Self-punishment also, a little self Exactly. Or yes, self-punishment. Yes, yes. yes because, uh, yeah, yeah. because many times they, these natives rise to the top immediately and they are like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, how did I get to the top? And then they are like, you know, uh, but uh, it's very important for these natives to understand. It's like the past life karmas are propelling them. And once they begin to understand, it's like, uh, okay, they are basically coming back to where they left off in their past life karma. You know, that's a big thing for these natives to understand. Uh, and that's where that's where the point of devotion is very important. It's very natural for these natives to follow a devotional path very easily, and uh, these uh, path of devotion can be easily expressed in research or anything like that. You know, all that is completely fine. Uh, but uh, one other thing about devotion is also that the fault of Anuradha native is that they might be too too strongly devoted to the wrong cause for a long time. It's just because they are so familiar with the devotion energy that they just they just are like. Speak, sticking to that devotion aspect of that. And they are like, these are the natives when everyone else is leaving the organization. These are the last natives to leave the organization. Oh, you yes. know, because then they'll tolerate yeah. anything. Abuse exactly. something way too long. Yes. Right. I've seen this. The ability so it's to like, handle someone else's abuse. Um, right. in the workplace, at home, I, I've seen this. It can be a strength or a weakness. Could you right, come out right. Last so it's like <laughs> right, right. So you know, it's right. kind of yeah. sometimes the strength yeah. becomes a weakness as well. Yes, okay. exactly. For sure. Exactly. You don't want exactly. To so it's like uh, yeah. So these natives really have to be discriminating about what they are being becoming loyal towards. So if everyone is literally like leaving the organization or leaving a spiritual organization or leaving a guru, like pay attention. You know, like what actually is happening. So they have to be willing to be logical about that. You know, that's a big thing. Uh, because they only understand the devotion aspect. You know, they are so in love with the devotion angle that they, they are willing to devote themselves completely. And they understand that, you know. Uh, that's a big thing. Uh, now, I always call Anuradha Nakshatra as the Luke Skywalker Nakshatra, you know, because it's like, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker is the perfect uh, character because he grew up as a farm boy literally in the middle of nowhere in Planet Tatooine in Star Wars universe. You know, it's like a, he was a farmer there. And then he decided to walk the path of a Jedi. You know, he took the first step. And then he had a mentor, you know, and he became the Jedi. He trained himself and he was very friendly with uh, whatever challenges came his way. He was very friendly with all the people whom he met. And then he, in episode four, the farm boy in episode four, 
is like uh, you know in episode 5 and episode 6 is directly dealing with the emperor or the main villain himself you know it's like dealing with darth vader in episode 5 dealing with episode 6 you know main villain so it's many times for like uh, anradha natives these natives might re- re- reach to the top and then they are dealing with the main players in that particular re- arena you know that can actually happen and they'll be very surprised at how did this happen you know? but uh, it's like simply because they were um, committed uh, they were uh, persistent you know luke skywalker still decided committed was committed to his path of jedi you are still doing the you know jedi training and all that stuff you know so that that's the big team there and i've seen that uh, many times so they might love star wars or you know uh, that kind of thing can actually happen they might actually say you know luke skywalker is great a heroic that kind of thing to it too yeah right. exactly exactly <laughs> exactly and uh, that's also like the path of a lotus you know like a lotus uh, you know is can grow out even after the mud you know the muddiest of pond can still be uh, still give rise to the lotus so it's like uh, the dirt you have collected is still giving rise to beauty with it so there is these some natives who might go through some difficult experiences and then eventually understand that you know there is actually something of value that i have learned that can be shared you know it, it is part of something bigger you know that can actually happen uh, i've seen that happening a lot and many times the challenge for anradha natives is to become unstuck so they are stuck in certain st- certain the the dirt they might the lotus should rise to the top so but they might get stuck in the middle portion half way to the pond and it's all muddy there you know but then once they rise to the surface of the pond then it blooms so it's a big challenge for these natives to rise to the top and then continue to bloom you know that's a big big thing here um then uh, yeah that's a big thing so i told about loyalty to a fault or that kind of a problem uh, the other thing is a mysticism element you know uh like these are natives who are very much inclined towards chakras you know who want to know and understand about all the chakras and all that kind of thing all the energies and all that you know that's like they'll be drawn to that um the other in- interesting angle about anradha is that the uh, the well uh, you know so anradha is the lotus so they there might be connection with flooding there might be some kind of connection with plumbing there might be connection with piping and all that kind of thing with anradha sometimes there might be flooding happening in their home you know because the basement is where you kind of get stuck in you know uh, that kind of thing so there might be flooding happening in the lowest floor or some basement uh, that kind of thing can happen with anradha uh, other thing is that uh, you know anradha because of the lotus kind of structure a well is like a lotus so i've seen that temples that are having wishing wells so special wells right so that's a special uh, special for anradha it is for instance rameshwaram temple down in south india has like 21 wells out of which you know you get water from all the 21 well you are you reach heaven you know so it's like uh, this concept of wells this uh, they might be sit under the natives might end up visiting rameshwaram temple you know or sometimes uh, these natives might end up um, connected with wishing wells so very special uh, sacred water sites you know like um, even uh, there are many uh, well, like in glastonbury well tube wells people exactly. connected with occupation with the digging underground exactly wells. exactly but see what i'm actually talking about is like spiritual well connection there is this well which is actually spiritual water like you know there is a there you will find lot of wishing wells in uh, all around the world which can actually sometimes give you a wish you know that kind of thing for instance there is this natural spring water kind of uh, place in glastonbury also which is considered to be great also you know that's also one more thing so there are all these kind of places which is connected with water and well you know but even in uh, well is actually Uh, and rather uh, one uh, what uji mentioned in the video is that uh, you know um, like uh, they are friends with the secret world that can actually happen they are very friends with the secret world so many times when you have a dream about a well what can it, what it can signify is that it's kind of opening you to a new new portal new domain so like when in subconscious world in the dream world when you see a well and if you jump into the well you are actually entering into a new world you know that can actually happen so i've seen that uh, kind of thing actually happening with uh, andrada also uh well uh, one one last point i would just add is that uh, there is also this um, lotus birth kind of theme uh, you know there are many lotus thing is very true like these natives might be leading the lotus sutra a lot of um, you know they might be connected with devotional path or they might be connected with uh, you know all kind of lotus kind of themes there they might literally have a car having lotus they might literally have a tattoo of lotus you know all kinds of variations with lotus i have seen playing out um definitely one one thing is also that uh, cyber security uh, you know agriculture you know the staff of uh, mitra the great contributor aditya and ev also share that you know? uh, that's uh, that's one thing uh, also like uh, there is this uh, interesting thing called the lotus birth if you look it up online uh, it's kind of this concept where the baby is still attached to that tube and the tube is not cut out of the you know mother's womb 
you know so that uh, the tube of that connecting the mother and the baby is not cut and that the entire thing is removed you know and it's kind of showing that and if you look at that tube it's like literally the placenta is still held on to uh, you know it's still the entire placenta itself is removed instead of like cutting off the tube you know so that's an interesting concept with uh, lotus birth so kind of showing this purity kind of showing this regeneration and apparently baby is born through that kind of a birth uh, might uh, supposed to be more whole whole because of uh, the tube is not being cut you know it's like the more natural way of uh, reproducing supposedly something like that and th- th- this might be like the um, birthing uh, you know like the water uh, birth phenomena like they actually give birth in a bathtub that kind of thing is also happening i've seen that also with uh, anradha um, now one last concept i'll share uh, before i ask aditya to share the slides is the uh, concept of this dantian you know like uh, you have this dantian is like uh, so the uh, like what um, the concept of how brahma came from the navel of vishnu right and the brahma came from the navel of vishnu so this navel is actually a very special portion in our body like literally our mother's pubes are connected to our navel right now there is it is said that there is also this universal uh, uh, tube connecting to the universe directly to our stomach you know and that is the whole concept around this dantian uh, for chinese martial arts and chinese you know chakra people and all that you know it's like um, yes i'm very familiar right Yes. So it's like it's very much associated with uh, you know what do you say um, uh, with your health maintaining the health you know you can actually bring in more more energy into that all that is actually happening with this dantian concept uh, and that is something i i've seen that these natives might be naturally into like this mystical martial arts and stuff like that you know like they are more focused on dantian or dantian kind of work maybe like tai chi or stuff like that you know all that is possible um Yeah, I think uh, that's all I have. But then, uh, Aditya, if you just share the slide, uh, I'll just uh, yeah. just quickly. And that was a good point, yeah, Santip. You mentioned about um, Anur- uh, Anuradha. Anuradha falls in the the natural eighth house, and right. uh, I think eighth house is also connected to all that waste which comes out of the body, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Whatever is unwanted, yes. it yes. absorbs all yes. the nutrients. and it yes it, uh, throws away things that are unwanted you know so maybe anuradha natives also need to understand that they have to take only those essence like the lotus you only take that bit what you want and it, you know lotus blossoms in muddy waters as you mentioned and it leaves on very little sustenance they need very little sustenance and rest of the things they just don't need it so anuradha natives need to know amongst all those things which are available they need to take only those things which are important to them and let go of the other things as waste so i have seen a connection with anuradha with a uh, kitchen and the kitchen sink which gets clogged it's like the tube that needs to be drained out so you put you know you put uh, you know whatever drainex or whatever you put and you try to put chemicals and you try to remove that so that's the same right. thing which create uh, ill health if you are not having good bowels you need to clear the bowels right you know that's, that's clearing the the track right so that might be another thing that might be connected to anuradha is to let go of those things that have come that you don't need in your life right right yeah definitely i think that clearing the track is a super important point dr pai because we eat a lot and all that you know that kind of thing is also there uh one Correct. one other thing is definitely definitely anuradha is connected 100% with plumbing i can tell you that you have malfix there you will have plumbing problems yeah. you know, you 100% water guys yes yeah water on yeah. the pipes should drink yeah. water See, i've actually noticed that they do find that very healing I, i actually now that i i know someone off the top of my head that just drinks tons of water anytime they don't feel well and they're on anuradha is clearing the the duct you're clearing remember yeah. yeah that again i'm going to the uh, the uh, the tarabalam you know barani falls in the shema nakshatra and that's where you know saturn gets you know uh, debilitated so if you don't clear your duct then you'll get illnesses the health of the gut is very important for anuradha people in general and that's why they want to keep flushing out toxins from the body right drainex right you all drainex drainex yeah <laughs> now there's actually one big uh, one big thing uh, you know anradha is actually one of the nakshatras uh, i think i'll just add at this point uh, aditya you can begin to share the slide which i sent you yeah. like um, uh, one point is that uh, 
uh, Anurag is actually following the Sarpa Drakana, you know, of the zodiac. So Sarpa Drakana is actually the zodiac portion which is connected with the Sarpas or Kundalini energies, you know. So many times I've seen, uh, I think Mark Boni mentioned this in his previous videos with Dr. Pa, uh, with KRS, you know, like Dr. KRS, right, literally. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, yeah, so that's one thing I've seen that they might have some kind of Kundalini kind of effect happening. Uh, at some point, if those, uh, if those Dashas are activated, uh, that's one thing I can say. Now here I have this, this simple no, but slide of... Point about the belly button which you mentioned, see the center of gravity of the body is exactly, exactly. the belly button. Right. And right. the baby also rotates, you know, the belly button. Right. I think, you know, that's the belly button of Vishnu from which Brahma was born in the lotus flower. Exactly. Exactly. So that is right. protecting that area, which is the Swadhisthana Chakra. I always say right. you can protect yourself from evil forces and negative uh, emotions because many of us will become, you know, emotional sponges. And Anuradha natives usually take the emotions of people very easily. Right. The pain of people very easily. So protecting right. the navel region is the most important. And, you know, that navel region is also connected to uh, Jupiter. And I said Jupiter's Mulatrikona falls in Vipat in Mula and debilitation happens in Pratyak, which is in... Didn't uh, you say, Dr. Pai, you can apply something on the navel region to protect it? Yeah, exactly. This is what I usually give uh, in my Vedic life coaching sessions is uh, you can take two strands of saffron, okay, and then put two drops of water. And after your shower, you can come and apply that water on the belly because then you are activating, uh, you know, Jupiter. Jupiter protects you. The, the, because the saffron's water would be, you know, orangish in color. So you apply that. And then I always say, you know, put the, the saffron on your tongue because then that activates good speech. Because, you know, um, Jupiter, Mulutrikona falls in the second house of speech and third house where it gets, uh, you know, debilitated. What planet, you know, what planet controls Swadhisthana Chakra, Dr. Pai? Is, is it again Jupiter? I think Jupiter. It's Jupiter itself, yeah. Jupiter. Jupiter. Muladhara is Saturn. And Jupiter controls Swadhisthana. So either you can apply, there is a call of, uh, there's a thing called Gopi Chandan. And this is what I learned from um, an Ayurvedic doctor. And he said, you know, many of us, especially astrologers, because we take in a lot of uh, uh, the emotion and karmic exchange when it happens. We, we protect, we are most protected because most of the astrologers do sadhana and do meditation and all of that. So all their chakras from here up to your Manipura. Manipura means the you know, Manipura is the, is the city of gems. So you're protecting yourself. But what happens is you leave your lower two chakras very open, which means your Muladhara chakra and your Swadhisthana chakra. So he said, apply Gopi Chandan. You know, Gopi Chandan is a sort of uh, a clay which comes from Mathura. And it was said it is uh, sacred for the Indians because, you know, Lord Sri Krishna had walked on the soil of Mathura. So the clay of Mathura, like we get, you know, Multani Mitti. Multani Mitti is a sort of clay which you get from uh, Multan area of Pakistan, which is said to be very good for your skin, you know, for bringing out your... So many people use uh, mud packs. So Multani Miti is used as a mud pack. Similarly, you know, this thing Gopi Chandan is used uh, for the same thing. It protects your, uh, your, your navel. And that is the Nabi of Vishnu, Vishnu Nabi. And from Vishnu Nabi is, you know, we had Brahma who was born from the Lotus. So all these right. connections. Yeah. What's, yeah. yeah, what's interesting, Dr. Pai, is that the Nabi is actually falling in the sixth house. And if you make Andrada Nakshatra as the ascendant in this chart, you can see that the debilitation of Saturn is happening in sixth house. So that uh, right. with respect to Andrada ascendant. So protecting yes. that uh, definitely is the way to protect that, you know. Uh, Absolutely. Your, right. uh, yeah. Getting it because see, oh, yeah. uh, Saturn is karma karaka. He is the karaka for you know karmas. So whenever you you do a reading or when you do a consultation, you are exchanging karmas. There is some element of karmas that are exchanged between you and your client or your you and your you know the the native who comes to seek guidance from you. So all, all astrologers need to protect their Swadhisthana Chakra. Otherwise, you know, you see many of them will have uh, indigestion problems, uh, acidity, uh, gastric problems, you know, uh, or bloating of the stomach or uh, the, uh, health of the gut. These are the most important right. points. Health of the gut can give you a lot of illnesses. 
there are two points in the body where you have to take care. One is the mouth because a lot of germs accumulate in the mouth. So using a tongue cleaner would be the best way to get rid of all those them at least twice a day. And then another thing is detoxification of your, uh, you know, gut. Right. And right. So what do you do? What, what, what herbal medicine you will suggest, Dr. Pai? Detoxification? Yeah, I would say detoxification. Yeah. Yeah. There is a, you can take the peel of a, a pomegranate, oh. you know, the skin of the pomegranate. Okay. And you can sun dry them and then you can boil the water and have that. And on that day, when away detoxifying your gut, it's the best remedy for this detoxification, natural way of detoxification of your gut. It's a large intestine. And another remedy that you know people say in Ayurveda is called uh, it's called colon hydrotherapy, using water to flush out all the the deposits on your large intestine. Because what happens is large intestine gets clogged, and then slowly that uh, you know food particles which have not been digested and not been absorbed they get deposited, and then that creates also, problems. I want to say for to, for people to be very careful with that because there's a lot of practitioners that do that and they they don't know what they're doing entirely. Yeah or they believe in severe um, methods. And uh, I think you're safer with a traditional Panchakarma expert. Um, Absolutely. Who, who would know what kind of pasti or like who would know what kind of um, thing to do um, when you're putting water up there like that? Um, there have been exactly. people that have gotten injured. Injured, exactly. It can actually, it's very delicate. Yeah. Yeah. It's very delicate because you, you need, need experts to do that. Because if the water goes into the small intestine, then it can be very harmful. Yes. Only exactly. try to think of the, the large intestine. Because yeah. small intestine is, is very, very delicate. It's a seat of agni. It's yeah. a seat of fire. That it's actually, yeah, you don't want to mess with the small intestine whatsoever. As a matter, matter of fact, that's a purging therapy where you would um, invoke uh, <laughs> vomiting. Excuse me. Yeah. The stomach and the small intestine a lot of times are, should be purged that way. Yes. The yeah. stomach specifically, but yeah, be very. I would just say with, with anyone listening needs to be very careful with these things. Yeah. Do an and, experts. and don't try to do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, here. Uh, so yeah, great points, Dr. Pai. I think that is brilliant, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I just want what to... What a nice yeah. class, cleaning your gut, all 8th house cleaning. <laughs> all eight thousand, yeah. So all health stuff, yeah. So here, you know, um, here I think uh, I just want to highlight, you know, that what I mentioned before, Krishna left Madhura and Radha, so childhood crush may move away from you. That can possibly happen with uh, Anradha. Now, if you go to the next slide, Aditya, uh, you can see that. Uh, so this is a summary map of all the influences uh, with respect to uh, Anradha ascendant. You know, this looks like kaleidoscope. You know, kaleidoscope. <laughs> yeah, see that's a see that's a great point about kaleidoscope because uh, you know literally uh, what I'm realizing is that uh, all the astrological systems are nothing but different kinds of kaleidoscope. It's the same kaleidoscope, but you're rotating, and then suddenly the colors have shifted, and now you have to interpret it based on what you're seeing. You know, that's basically what all kinds of systems is like. Whether it be Pai Padadi, whether it be Navatara or stuff like that, you know, it's like. But then, then, but. Uh, as long as you understand what you're looking at, what the structures are, then it's great. But uh, here in this map, what I wanted to share was uh, a simple point about like uh, how you, how Anradha natives might actually make gains through secrecy. If you look at the 8th house, it's actually ruled by Mercury and Mercury is getting exalted in the 11th house of gains. You know? So they might make gains through secrecy. That's one thing for Anradha native. Uh, other thing is that sometimes it might be helpful for these natives to make uh, use of a weapon. Uh, you know, for their own protection. So like whether it be a staff, whether it be a knife, you know. Now, uh, Bharat Ram mentioned this great point about how uh, based on opposite nakshatra themes, like uh, one of the videos, like about uh, how you can use the knife, um, how he suggested the remedy of using a knife to, um, so it, a child was having constellation problem. He had a moon in Andrada. What he recommended was that the, the child should what, basically what go and is? cut constellation problem, moon in Andrada. Okay. The child should basically ask his mother to the to tell the child to literally use a, a knife and cut a piece of vegetable. Just cut a piece of vegetable, make one cut, and that's it. And eventually, by activating the opposite nakshatra, that literally the all the problems of that child, that constellation issues, all of that uh, ended up going away. You know, so that is kind of interesting. So in terms of uh, Andrada, now uh, here we talked about how Saturn is getting double in sixth house. 
uh, exalted in 12th house, so foreign land, as uh, what EG mentioned. Uh, Saturn is uh, having its uh, Multrocon in 4th house, so, you know, dealing with all the emotional issues at heart and all that, you know, all that kind of thing. Uh, see, look, remember that the 4th house is actually falling in the natural 11th house of the zodiac. So many times I've seen these are the natives who might uh, literally be come to large organizations or something like that. At some point, there might be this large scale organization thing happening. Uh, one way or the other. Uh, sometimes it can be like a trust fund, ashram, some government organizations, companies, you know, all variations of that 11,000 Aquarius that can happen. So they do have a very scientific, logical thing which Aditya completely elaborated about. But uh, one interesting thing about Andrada here is that if you make look at the Andrada Nakshatra itself, I think, uh, yeah, it's ruled by Mars and uh, that Rashi is where Moon is getting debilitated. And uh, there is also this influence of Rahu and Ketu and Jeshta. You know. Mm. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. So to remember that uh, this Rahu and Ketu getting exalted in Scorpio Rashi and uh, Andrada being very close to, you know, uh, close to that uh, exaltation point or being in the vicinity of Scor being in literally in the heart of Scorpio, is kind of showing uh, how many of these natives can literally. Be, you know, and I do think that uh, the Lotus is actually a reference to the. Um, the uh, chakras that can be awakened as you continue the path. You know, so many times for these natives, the greater symbolic meaning of the lotus is actually like continue on the path, you know, awaken your higher chakras, stabilize your root chakra, go to the next chakra, go to the all the chakras, balance of the chakras, you know, something along those lines. And uh, that's what these natives should uh, continue to go through because uh, Rahun Ketu is literally controlled with the Kundalini energy, as I mentioned, you know. So it's like under the natives literally have to follow a path of devotion. They have to be willing to stick for it for the long term. And uh, the moment when they begin to stick for it for the long term, what would be the path? They'll begin to feel a uh, lot more uh, benefits and gains coming their way. So, yeah. And, you know, probably whatever points uh, we discussed here, I think Dr. Pai beautifully illustrated an Autara kind of a scheme with Pai Padhati as you're stopping. But, you know, whatever points we discussed uh, so far can also be looked analyze based on this chart also you know that's also one thing i'll just add and you viewers can think about that and look back into this chart and try to see the planetary influences and see make out things you know one interesting thing you can see here is that many times i've seen under the natives might be dealt with a lot of responsibility now we have to remember that mitra is also an aditya so that is also one interesting thing you know like how these natives might still have this kind of aditya kind of role to play out you know so like they might shine others, they might be more externalized, something like that. Uh, that kind of thing can also happen. Um, and final point, I just want to conclude uh, with Andrada is that um, uh, the, the plant Tulsi is also a symbol of devotion. And I think that is very, very uh, uh, interesting. And I've seen that many times with uh, Andrada. Sometimes these, these are the natives who will like have very simple devotional practices. Like, uh, you know, they might just have a Tulsi leaf and they'll just put that on the God on Krishna and that's like, you know, bringing them all the blessings and stuff like that. So many times there is this huge power of simplicity of devotion and uh, and that legend of Tulsi plant is also great, you know. So one uh, one thing is also to try to drink water in which you're putting Tulsi leaves. Like you can get Tulsi like holy basil, you can get these leaves, put that in water, soak it and drink that water. That's a simple remedy. Um, and the other final point is like you can, um, because Scorpio is a fixed sign, you can actually make use of uh, fixed water bodies like lakes or swimming pools or, you know, and just meditate upon those fixed water bodies like ponds or lakes and stuff like that. And uh, meditating by a water body is very, very helpful for these natives uh, in respect to dealing with their deeper emotional turmoil within. Yeah, you know? I just, so I've I, seen that also working. I just got Tulsi, Tulsi seeds today before, before right, I was you know? coming from groceries. So Andrada is oh. activated for you then. You yeah, Andrada is activated, exactly. So yeah, for some reason, I'm feeling the strong connection with uh, with Tulsi and Andrada. Uh, not but Tulsi, yeah, entirely sure why. Who was, who was uh, that was story, correct? He was she was a wife yeah, of someone. Actually, yeah, uh, Santipji, I think you're right. She her devotion was so powerful. Full, yeah. That even Lord Vishnu has to ask her to please, you know, yeah. let him kill her husband. Yes. <laughs> it was yeah. all towards her husband. What was that? Who was her? I forget um, the name. Her original name. I, it's slipping his me name right was, now. Yeah, his name is called as Jalandar. And she, she was a yeah. Vranda. Vranda. Her name was Vranda. Vranda. Yeah, so she, she okay. 
her, her um, what do you call it, the garland, of course, never spoiled or never dried. I mean, her devotion to him was like that of, and uh, she, you know, even after he enslaved all the Upsaras and had Indra's seat, <laughs> you know, he's wreaking havoc. She's, she's still treating him um, with absolute humility and devotion, even though she gently says that it's not ethical to do this. So that this is this is that Mitra or Anuradha. She was trying to be his friend, while at the same time having this pure devotion to him. She tried to counsel him gently, um, and in the end, of course, um, all the gods have to plead with her because her devotion is so perfect, so pure. But I think it was uh, the story goes. Jalandhar was uh, believed to be the son of um, Shiva. Okay. And he was the most, the mightiest of all times, the Asura, the mightiest Asura of all times. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Jalandhar. And his wife was so chaste and his love for Jalandhar would protect him. I mean, nobody could kill him because until her chastity was, you know, disrupted, nobody could kill him. So actually, uh, Vishnu, you know, takes the form of Jalandhar and he has it, his way with the uh, Vranda. And she, he breaks that. And that's how, you know, Shiva comes and then kills or slays Jalandhar, his own son. Okay. But there is also in yoga, in Hatha yoga practice, there is a, a famous yoga practice called as Jalandhar Band. Jalandhar Band means you just put your head down and you block your Vishuddha Chakra. Okay. And that releases the energy lock, which is there. It's called Jalandhar Band in your Hatha yoga practice. So that is the only way we can actually remove that. And again, it's connected to your throat. Again, we, we talked about the stock of lotus. Yeah, so right. Vishuddha, Vishuddha means trying to purify the, the poison in your body. Right. Get rid of that poison. So right. her devotion. I wonder. Anura, yeah. yeah. See, again, the third house we were, we were mentioning about where the debilitation of uh, Jupiter is happening in Uttarashada. Right. Okay. Right. So that Jalandar Band is here. Yeah, next. And also the showers. The shoulders, yeah, the third half. Yeah, the shoulders, right. exactly. Yeah. And in the shoulders or, or near the shoulder area, yes. Yes, absolutely. So I, I, I wonder if, uh, you know, they should just sit in lotus pose for a long time, <laughs> you know, uh, like, or try to sit in the lotus pose or something like that. Uh, oh, because I think not. even... So what, about, what about visiting the temple, Padmanabha Swami, no, Padma? Padma. Yeah, yeah, that's... Padmanabha yeah, Padmanabha is actually, uh, I think Dr. Pai was saying Padmanabha Swami is come to with uh, Satabisha and uh, you know, definitely that Varna Mitra theme will play out for yeah, sure. Yeah, because, yeah, there's a lot of secrecy around Padmanabha Swami temple, you know, there was like a huge treasure that was found and all that, you know. Uh, that he, didn't thing, so. he didn't treasure, right. and only two of those have been opened up, I think the third one, I think uh, right. door the third one. The third one is yeah. still locked. And many, right. yeah. there is a, 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 there is only Garuda mantra which can open up. Nobody there is knows no the bolt, yeah, there is no bolt, no lock. Only Garuda. Through, I think with mantra they have closed it. And it's yeah, like, the mantra, right. they have used yeah. the serpent mantra. Yeah, serpent and mantra. And mantra, and they have closed the door, and nobody can open that door. It's a very secretive thing, and they say Garuda mantra is the only thing which can open it up. Now nobody knows what is that secret Garuda mantra, which opens up right. that lock. <laughs> Right. Like there was a long, right. there was a huge government thing going for a few years back, correct? They, there was long debate right, right. on to open it or not. Right. It was a huge right. definitely. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, temple, that, that's huge. Yeah. The richest temple in the world today yes. after they found the treasure. Yeah. You know, the yeah. amount of uh, treasures that they found, they say it's, it cannot be even valued. It's so valuable, you know. Yeah, it's, it's as rich as the Vatican right now, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's possible. Huge. And mind you, it's only two two doors have been opened. The third one is still not opened. It's yeah, a actually, the it's guys, a... uh, the 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 people who opened the first door ended up dying or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so the people are also scared. Like yeah, so they are like scared to that open the third door. So. I'll go back. I'll talk about you. are talking Padmanabha Swami. You're talking about uh, Shatabishak because that is hidden wealth. You know, Shatabishak right. is something in the wheel. It's hidden wealth. But also remember what is happening now is if somebody is going to open that door, Ashlesha energy is going to be activated. Why? Because if yes. you see uh, in this Navatara system again from Anur Anuradha Nakshatra, you know, uh, Mars gets debilitated in, uh, you know, Ashlesha, in Ashlesha Nakshatra. Right. Okay, so 
there is some energy which will unlock there if right. somebody is interesting there. and and surprisingly from anuradha ashlesha nakshatra is sampat nakshatra right right okay. so it's like yeah right so it's like if you open up that particular ashlesha wealth you are literally cursing your So Mars is getting exactly. debilitated because this is the first Absolutely. lot. Mars is debilitated, right. and under mysterious circumstances, many of them see it could be a coincidence. Okay, right. because when we talk about astrology and when we talk about them, people will be thinking, okay, these people are you know just believing it's superstition or whatever. But it's mysterious conditions. Everybody who have been engaged with that opening of the door have had some right. uh, trouble in their life, or some of them have mysteriously died. Uh, right. We can go Google it up, and we can look at it. You know. But right. I'm just talking astrological side of what could have happened. Ashlesha Nakshatra is is where they have said these doors these doors were locked through Sarpa mantras or Naga right. mantras. Yeah, if you yeah, don't understand true. the mystery yeah. behind that, that's exactly. it's a venom. Nagas. Yeah. yeah, it's their venom yeah. which is going to come out. Ashlesha, it's the wish, you know, Vishashlesha na Shakti. Exactly. You yeah. Know, so. that's 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 what you're going to open up with the debilitation of mars and mars don't forget the moon trigon of mars is uh, the 6th house actually right okay the 6th right. house Sixth definitely definitely that's very fascinating point dr pai i think navtara versus pai padadi is kind of going to be no, this is something that I, yeah. i could do a complete lesson on this just the navtara and right. using these simple concepts and you can really beautifully understand what is happening in the so right. <laughs> yeah so dr pai did you have a slide to share um, maybe i will do it next time i think it's already I quite late okay. no it's yeah not. i think i'm counting so we are 13 minutes yeah okay we are 13 minutes so far so yeah, maybe next time whenever we do another thing i'll show you the slide maybe i'll quickly show you that slide whatever i have here and then people can you know it's very easy you can make it and you can start studying on your own whatever i have here i'll just show you uh, i'll just say that and I'm, we won't talk much about it but we will if we discuss it in another session uh, let me just put that slide up it don't worry it's not our longest video our longest video was ashlesha so no worries oh still ashlesha how long oh, was ashlesha yeah. how long was ashlesha 3 hour 3 hour, hour 40 minutes something This is four, I think. So no, this is this is three hour thirteen so far. Oh, okay. Thought, wait, ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We have a thirteen. Don't worry. We we have we, we have another half an hour to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doctor Pai, we can't see uh, the slide. We are seeing your screen uh, desktop instead. Okay. Let me. See. Can you see it now? No. Nope. We oh, see yeah, yeah now we can see now, now we, we can. can see yeah okay i'll just show you what i have here um this is the table which you know talks about mula trikona exaltation and debilitation okay so this slide is just showing you you know what are the mula trikona what degrees and all of that and uh, this is an avatara system i'll quickly talk about you know the fourth nakshatra which is shema it's called jati nakshatra uh and we don't have the time to talk, discuss each of these uh, you know these uh, navtara concepts the eighth nakshatra is called matru the the 10th nakshatra is called karma the 16th nakshatra is called vinasha uh, the 18th is samudaya then you have uh, you know uh, adhana nakshatra so 19th nakshatra is supposed to be very auspicious adhana and uh, the pratyek so nakshatra why doctor here i have question why the fourth nakshatra is also shema and also jati jati means lineage okay so it is it is see there is some additional points in the navtara system this is the you know that's again i say paryaya paryaya means the first cycle second paryaya third paryaya all of them are connected to janma anujanma trijanma yeah. and you know i have taught this in my uh, classes saying that whenever things come from when more planets are falling in trijanma part which is the third paryaya that means you know something is coming from the past life some past life influences might come into their life when it is sitting in anujanma something in the future whatever is whatever activities they doing related to that planets might have an influence in the future and janma is present okay present future past so the 27 nakshatra is always called abhishek nakshatra okay okay so you you see that 
Now, this is the thing for Anuradha that I've done. So everybody can do this table. It's very easy to do it. And then you'll be able to see, you know, and those three, five, seven, which, you know, Ibchi was mentioning about Vipat, Pratyak, Naidana. So these are not considered to be very favorable when planets are falling there with respect to the, the Janma. Always Janma Nakshatra, whenever you talk about it, it's related to Moon, but you can also use, you know, other planets and do it. It will give you some significant clues, including when uh, major planets are transiting these nakshatras from your Janma Nakshatra, which is your Moon, can give you, or it could be Ascendant, or it could be your Mahadasha Lord, whatever. But it will give you some great clues. But just looking at Anuradha's table, you'll be able to decipher everything. What I was doing is I was just looking at this table as you're speaking, and that's how I was trying to connect with everything. You know, you can see from this table, it's very self-explanatory. When you talk about, we were talking about, you know, the Ashwini uh, is Vipat and there's exaltation of sun. There's Mars, there's Moon, Trikona, you know, Bharani. We were talking about Bharani, that's Shema Nakshatra. So I was just looking at this whole table, nothing else. So Mrigashira becomes like a Vinasha Nakshatra. And there's it's a quick way to do these in their, their head, um, just for the, the people that want to learn this. Because, I mean, if you look, um, like the vip, Vipat uh, is three, right? So the number value will always add to three, right? Yep. So the 12th Nakshatra is going to be the 21st Nakshatra. Okay, right. you add the numbers are always going to add the three and you'll know they're in that category. And, and also it's very easy because they're always going to be the same graha. So it's always going to be, you know, Mars, 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 or Ketu, 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 like that. So anyone using this can do this quickly. I just want to try to help people because I've done this for so long and it can become a headache unless you just uh, do, uh, yeah, <laughs> if you just make it simple. And then that's what I was saying, uh, you know, Aditya and Yuji, you know, just look at here. Mitra nakshatras are all the Rahu nakshatras. Shatabishak is a Mula Trikona, you know, um, yeah. even Ganista is 0 to 20 degrees is, uh, you know, Mula Trikona of uh, uh, Saturn. It's a Matu nakshatra as well. It's like mother, motherly love that comes from. So, Shatabishak nakshatra and Ardra Nakshatra and Swati Nakshatra. All of them are healers actually, if you see in one level, because Ardra, you mentioned about well, Rudra. It's nice because eight, if you put Asha, Anuradha in the Lagna, then the Satavisha will come on the fourth house, mother's house. Yeah. So you can see that. It's a fourth house and it's also Matru. Matru. Right? So use this system and you can also use uh, uh, the Sarvata Badra Chakra and you will also see some great uh, connections also with different nakshatras. Right. You can see here Janma I made an Anuradha and this sequence follows. So you can and do it with transit, every transit the transit aspects are different just so people know if they're looking at the Sarvatra yeah. Chakra, the way that the aspects work are actually different from nakshatra to nakshatra than what if you're using a traditional thing. So you should learn it before trying to um <laughs> trying to know yes. It's a it's a whole system in itself, right, Dr. Paiji? Absolutely. It's a separate system. It's a complete different system. Yeah. But that system also can give you uh, very great uh, results, you know, and the kings used to use the Sarvato Badra Chakra. Yes, very In good. Nakshatra. Yes, it's very accurate. And beautifully, what if you see Sarvato Badra Chakra, you know, all we can explain even, um, you know, the, the solstice and the, the equinoxes. You know, if you see uh, all, all the dual signs in the Sarvato Badra Chakra, okay, you have um, Ardra Nakshatra, which is the summer, uh, you know, solstice. Then opposite, which is Purva Shada, that's the winter. Then you have Hasta. What is Hasta? Autumn, is it? Um, Autumn equinox, Hasta. And then you have Uttara Bhadrapada, which is the spring equinox. Yeah. So these are like the pillar of the Sarvata Badra Chakra. That's where all the sun gets, you know, the equinoxes and the solstices. Uh, Aditya, correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. You have uh, what you said is correct. Yeah. So these are the points. These are the pinnacle points. So th that's another system. But that will already. change, correct? Like we know equinox and all changes. So that will change as per. Because we know equinoxal. That's the whole point of. Yeah. It will keep changing, but ge generally in the Sarvata Badra Chakra, that's where the points are, isn't it? These are the four corners of the Sarvata Badra Chakra, if you remember. 
okay they are called as the court walls you know those are the the guardians who, who guard the fortress court wall is somebody who guards who secures that fortress mm -hmm. anyway i think we have spent enough time but uh, i just wanted to share this uh, with people so that they can do their own table like this and uh, you can start studying much <laughs> Okay. So we have yeah. we have we have set another record other after Ashlesha, <laughs> second longest video so far by Pi Team. <laughs> but it's fascinating, you know. That's when we started this. I said, uh, you know, we just go. It is a free flow of information, and none of us have come very much prepared. You know, I think Aditya and Santip might have come more prepared with slides, but uh, you know, I don't come prepared. But whenever they they talk about things i i start connecting things and that's why these sessions are very important for all of us because we learn a lot from these uh, this exchange of you know dialogue and i hope you know all the viewers of krs channel are also going to benefit from and use these techniques you know you don't have to go to books you do uh, you know observe self study and have a passion for uh, nakshatras i think that's the only way to learn many of you come for these videos to actually look at these videos and see what is happening in their own charts that's a good way to learn but i'm just saying you know go beyond that and see you know what is happening in other people's chart take some examples you know work on the work on them that's the only way there's no substitute for uh, you know there's no substitute for hard work you know that's the only way we also learn it's only through exchange of ideas and sharing this knowledge with all of you that's how we learn so the, final, the final sentence dr pai is only one clean your gut <laughs> yeah i think that is <laughs> if this is some somebody who told me uh, this ayurvedic doctor he said when you have too many problems in your life the first thing is take care of your gut see what you are eating is is food being you know stored there then you will have problems because it's the eighth house right Absolutely. that is the eighth house yeah. so when you when you take care of your body as a temple your body is a temple and all the devatas are here in the body when you worship your body you know all your situations around you also start healing and they start cure that's the best cure the cure is all in nature you don't have to go to these expensive remedies that people are always say what is the remedy you know curing yourself is the first remedy heal yourself and then you see things around you start changing yes well on the topic of anuradha it's um, taking responsibility yes absolutely take responsibility and acceptance and awareness jyotish is jyotisha it's the self luminous light of the supreme being isha okay so it is only for guidance it's for spiritual guidance you know we have made it a predictive science today but it is a self correcting science let's not forget we are only looking at ways to correct ourselves we all have flaws we all have weaknesses you have strengths as well this is to identify those weaknesses and try to work on them you know many of our issues would be solved just by knowing and creating awareness and jyotish is to create is to create awareness and like as sandeep mentioned you know this is nothing but a kaleidoscope okay you can see the same problem from different angles it shows you different patterns but once you understand the patterns then you will accept and you will be more aware and i think that is how you approach life you can't remove all the obstacles from everybody's life you know whenever i talk with people they always say give me a remedy that's the first thing that they ask i say first remedy yourself you know first try to understand what is creating these problems everybody wants the solution it's like saying everybody wants to go to heaven but nobody wants to die you know that's the thing everybody talks about heaven but nobody wants to go through that process so jyotish is that way to connect yourself with the the higher entity you know and as long as you bring devotion uh and uh, i think anuradha's themes you know faith trust loyalty and devotion that's the only way you will be able to master uh, jyotish and when i say master you will never be able to master jyotish in one lifetime you will need multiple lifetimes to do that but i think if you if you are doing jyotish it's a very divine science we all talk about that but i think you have to also approach uh the science with a lot of gratitude and thank god that he has brought you to jyotish because that's the only way we can rectify ourselves by knowing what is happening in your charts and as aditya always mentions he is an astronomer as above so below 
<laughs> as inside so outside anyway this has been a beautiful discussion i know it's gone for so long but i i think this message has to go very clear to everybody you know don't come to jyotish just for predictive things and trying to you know say oh i could predict things no that's not the idea the idea is to go to the depth and now saturn is transiting into moola i think more people need to go and start uh, learning from the depth of the ocean the nuggets are all found there all the oysters the pearl is at the bottom of the ocean you don't float up so all this information that you are getting is very superficial you still need to go to the depth i think research will never stop and be open to ideas from all teachers and all gurus because everybody has something to share and we always can imbibe their their knowledge and try to form a better system so there will be greater learning and there will be better understanding so respect for all teachers and gurus is the most important uh, thing that i want to tell on this video of anuradha because if you disrespect some guru you might not you, you might not like their uh, you know approach or their teaching but that's not the point you're missing the the knowledge okay we belong to the knowledge the knowledge doesn't belong to us and whatever we are sharing you know, please go and share this knowledge with everybody and that's why we come and do these videos we don't want to hold this knowledge we don't want to be holders of knowledge and whatever little we know i think we come here and through these you know long videos which we do we <laughs> just share that we are not trying to you know hold anything behind and people who come for consultations with me they say oh i think most of the points you are telling me i have already seen all your videos you know 10 times over is the same information you know things are not going to change you know what whatever is it it is you know we are not going to hide anything and so that i think that free nature of what we are sharing is what anuradha is it's the oath is the trust is the the love for the science which is getting us together so please appreciate you know all the tutors are coming here spending their precious time you know i know uh, people would have differences of opinion with what we are saying here but beyond that please add some value to what we are teaching here we would like to learn from you people as well okay sometimes yes, lot, lot of these comments are very rich oh, lot of these comments are very very, you know, very helpful when we read the feedback of yes. people yeah definitely so last week that had last vishaka video people have put great comments so it was very helpful to learn yes. yeah. so thank you very much for the uh, support love and encouraging this team to come you know every month and give you more knowledge like this and we also learn from our clients from our other teachers and also from um, from all of you who are watching this this video so thank you everybody beautiful uh, dr prajee thank you uh, thank you beautiful closing thank you guys <laughs>